Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Nikos and today I'm going to explain the ultimate Halo Iceberg. This iceberg is going to be going over all things cursed, strange, and disturbing about the Halo franchise. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of the channel members and patrons. Thank you guys so much for all of your undying support for this channel. And if you haven't yet, be sure to like the video and subscribe so I can make more of these for you guys. Let's begin with level 1. Now, on level 1, you're probably going to know either all of these or most of them. They're pretty well-known facts. Let's kick it off with Paramount's Halo TV series. In the spring of 2022, the long, long-awaited live-action adaptation of the Halo series would finally be produced and featured on the streaming platform Paramount+. Plus. Pablo Schreiber stars as Jimmy Rings, well, I mean Master Chief, and the plot of the show deviated from canon occurring on a separate timeline known as the Silver Timeline, yet it loosely mirrors the settings, events, and themes of the Halo universe. Flood Juggernaut The Flood Juggernaut is a cut enemy found in the files of Halo 2. It appears to be a large flood form that uses its tentacles as massive thrashing weapons and can one-shot many enemies due to their high damage output. Modders have since brought the enemy into the game, such as in this case as done by the Vengeful Vatim. The Juggernaut has officially entered a Halo game post Halo 2 though, where it makes an appearance in the arcade shooter Fireteam Raven, over 10 years after it was originally cut. Spin-off games. Halo is a popular franchise, and like all popular franchises, there are several spin-off titles that have been produced that expand on the extended lore of Halo. The two Halo Wars games in particular bring Halo into a real-time strategy genre, Spartan Assault and Spartan Strike turn the Halo universe into a top-down arcade shoot-em-up best suited for mobile devices. Halo 3 ODST tells the Halo narrative from the perspective of an ODST foot soldier lost in an occupied Earth city, and Fireteam Raven is a Dave & Buster's exclusive arcade shooter cabinet for up to four players that takes place alongside the events of the first Halo game. Hashtag Fire343. <laughs> oh boy. More Halo drama. Basically, Halo Infinite delayed Season 3 amidst a sea of troubles since the game's development, and this culminated in a lot of rage occurring on Twitter, where the Fire343 hashtag was created and circulated because a lot of people were very unhappy with the way 343 Industries was handling the Halo franchise after over 10 years. Multiplayer lag. As long as online video games have existed, complaints about connection issues, or so-called lag, have been prevalent for years and Halo 2 was one of the first games to popularize online shooters. Packet loss, overburdened communication lines, and more contribute to these issues that are witnessed through delayed actions and rubber banding players around the map, which built up a ton of rage in households worldwide for years. I specifically remember the early days of Halo 3 matchmaking being particularly laggy, contributing to several frustrating games. Halo Meme Pages there are several meme forums for Halo fans, including r slash Halo memes on Reddit and more. 100 Ways to Die in Halo This is a popular Halo Reach video with around 3.9 million views, and I remember this one quite well. It was posted 12 years ago and appears to have been edited by the archaic Windows Movie Maker. This video is nostalgic, but I do also remember there are several copies of this video where others made their own takes on a hundred ways to die in the Halo games. Halo Array The Halo Array in Halo canon is the collection of 12 ring-shaped superweapon worlds known as the Halos. The first Halo we stepped foot on is Alpha Halo, or Installation 04, in Halo Combat Evolved. And the most recent one witnessed in game is Zeta Halo from Halo Infinite's campaign. The rings were created and fired as a last resort weapon to eliminate the flood around 100,000 years BCE. Camping. If lag is on here, then it's no surprise camping is too. This cheap strategy has plagued multiplayer lobbies for years, and is a highly popular one in Halo amongst new players and those who are of low skill. All one has to do is hide in a corner or highly defensible location and refuse to leave that spot, waiting for enemies to pass by into their trap. Funnily enough, there's an article on Halopedia detailing, in depth, the different varieties of camping strategies. Martin O'Donnell Also known as Marty O'Donnell, Martin is a composer who developed the soundtracks for most of Bungie's games, including the Halo series, and his magnum opus, the original Halo theme. 
which he wrote in only three days. O'Donnell had a major part in Bungie and the development of Halo, where he would recommend Steve Downs to be the voice of Master Chief. He worked on Halo as long as Bungie did until 2010, working as co-composer along with Michael Salvatore and a few others. Custom Games Beginning in Halo CE, players could edit game types to enable for seemingly limitless combinations to the multiplayer experience. Players could change starting weapons, scoring settings, spawn settings, and more. Halo 2 onwards would see online custom games where lobbies were filled from around the world, which saw the creation and widespread play of the Infection game mode. With the introduction of Forge in Halo 3, custom maps could be paired with these custom game modes to completely overhaul Halo and provide for some of the most memorable experiences in gaming, including Jenga, Super Happy Fun Slide, Haunted Mansion, Trash Compactor, Morbidly Obese Child, and one more classic I definitely remember for some reason, Protect Obama on the map White House. 2008 was just built different, man. Covenant Remnants. After the Great Schism and subsequent defeat of the Covenant in Halo 3, many Remnant factions rose from the remains of the Covenant and splintered off to form new forces to combat humanity. Mergvol's Covenant is the main antagonist of Spartan Assault, and Julem Dama's Covenant are one of the enemy factions in Halo 4 and 5. The Banished are the newest fragment from the Covenant, led by Atriox, and they made their first appearance in Halo Wars 2, followed by being the main antagonists of Halo Infinite. Halo the Official Cookbook Written by Victoria Rosenthal and released in August of 2022, the official Halo cookbook obviously provides directions and recipes for Halo-themed foods. Unfortunately, very little Halo-related material is in the cookbook and only meal names such as Moa Burgers and Frank's Fish Nuggets and a few smaller bits of Halo lore littered this book. Why is this thinly veiled Halo merch on this iceberg? Well, the cookbook stirred a lot of controversy in the Halo community, and what doesn't nowadays? Again, Halo Infinite had disappointed a lot of fans during the Season 2 debacle, and when Halo marketed this cookbook, fans were frustrated due to their marketing of a cookbook, but not supplementing content into Halo Infinite's live service model, even though the author of the cookbook had nothing to do with Halo and the creation of the game, and honestly, it's just craziness at this point. Warthog and Forza. With the release of Forza Horizon 3, the iconic Halo Warthog, minus the chain gun turret, made its way into the Xbox title in a sort of cross-promotion event. The racing series even saw the vehicle return for the fourth and fifth installments, along with an additional run complete with Pelicans, Banshees, voice acting, and Cortana voiced, of course, by Jin Taylor. Minecraft Halo mashups. Minecraft's Xbox 360 edition, and soon the Bedrock edition, offered a special resource pack themed around the Halo franchise, complete with a new tutorial world that matched up multiple Halo maps and levels into a single Minecraft world. The mashup packs also featured Halo tracks that replaced Minecraft soundtracks. I bought this as a kid years ago when it released, and honestly, it's worth it just for the music alone. Covenant Species Proper Names The aliens we've come to know and love, such as the Elites, Grunts, Jackals, Hunters, and more, are actually only called these names by the UNSC as military designations. In reality, these alien species go by proper species names, so to speak. Elites are Sangheili, Grunts are Ungoy, and you can find more of these examples throughout Halo wikis. Machinima Machinima is a style of cinema where real-time computer graphics engines are used to compose a film. Halo machinimas were very popular in the early days of YouTube, where Red vs. Blue would be perhaps the most famous machinima series of all time, and probably the most famous form of fan-made media of all time. In Red vs. Blue, player characters are moved to mimic speech and acting, and voice actors recorded lines through phone calls to create that classic helmet mic sound from the early days of the show. Map Remakes With as many classic multiplayer maps as there are throughout the Halo franchise, Bungie and 343 knew best to remake some of their most popular and best maps. A few examples include the remakes of Midship and Ivory Tower from Halo 2 into Halo Reach, along with Halo CE's Vast Blood Gulch being remade in Halo 2, Reach, Halo 2 Anniversary, and even Halo Wars as a similarly styled strategy arena. Forgers have even remade several of these classic maps in Halo Infinite as well. Idle animations. Idle animations are movements that a character performs whenever their player is inactive for long periods of time. 
They've been implemented starting in Halo CE, and have since appeared throughout the series. I always liked these animations as they provide immersion for the player, as depending on what the player is holding, unique aspects of the weapon are often toyed with by the hands of their Spartan or Elite that further give clues as to how these fantasy weapons function. Clans Clans are common throughout online games. In Halo, players grouped up into these so-called clans and roamed around matches as a big party. It's common for these clans to set their service tag to a clan tag, where each member of the clan would share the same service tag to designate their position in the clan. Clans consist of a hierarchical structure, with a sort of corporate ladder with leaders at the top and, you know, scrubs at the bottom. Basically, clans are for people who take Halo or any multiplayer game very seriously. Red reticle range. In the Halo games, the aiming reticle for each weapon will change to a red color whenever aiming at an enemy. This color change will occur at different ranges depending on which weapon you're holding. For instance, if you're using a battle rifle or a sniper rifle, the aiming reticle will be red at a further distance than something perhaps like a shotgun. And the moment the reticle turns red is when controller aim assist kicks in, so it is typically when a player will want to begin firing their weapon. Steve Downs. Mr. Downs is the voice actor for the Master Chief in nearly every Master Chief appearance in media, excluding very few such as the Halo TV series. This legendary voice has since become synonymous with the Chief, as his roles in voice acting don't extend far past this green suit. Official Halo Novels Various Halo novel runs have been published to flesh out the backstory for the universe of Halo. The earliest and most famous of these novels were published from 2001 to 2006, and included Halo, The Fall of Reach, and Halo, The Flood, two of the more famous novels from the glory days of Halo. The novels extend to Forerunner lore, Covenant species backstories, and the Alpha 9 ODST squad. Some of these novels are actually really good, I've read a few of them. Master Chief Fortnite skin. Hehehe, <laughs> oh, they put the guy from Fortnite into Halo! No way! Red vs Blue Door. On the Halo 3 campaign mission Crow's Nest, Players can witness a scene of a marine arguing with another marine through a locked door. The marines are voiced by various characters in the Red vs Blue Machinima series, and the dialogue in this easter egg changes depending on the difficulty that the player has selected. Red vs Blue has made several appearances throughout easter eggs throughout the franchise. Open up! Password! What? Need the password! You gotta be kidding me, what password? Password! They gave it out at the staff meeting 15 minutes ago. Meeting? What meeting? I was out here. Not supposed to let anyone in without it. If the staff meeting just ended, no one outside is gonna know the freaking password. Post credit scenes. Upon completing the Halo campaigns, various cutscenes will play after waiting through the credits that follow the final mission. These usually play only after completing the game on Legendary Difficulty, and are known as Legendary Endings. But there are some exceptions, such as the one of Guilty Spark flying from the wreckage of the Halo ring after the credits in Halo CE for PC. Game Taglines and Slogans The Halo series titles each have a slogan, or saying if you will, that hint at the main theme or plotline of each game. Peter Jackson's Halo film. The long-awaited Halo film was confirmed way back in 2005. It was intended to be produced by Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh. The film plans eventually fell through as funding was cut, and many of the elements of the cancelled Halo movie were actually recycled for District 9. It's a shame this film was canned. At least many of these props did go into Halo Landfall, which is a gritty series of shorts taking place on Earth as Chief entered orbit at the end of Halo 2 which is honestly a far better representation of Halo in film than the Halo TV series we got last year. Quick tidbit, the cancelled Halo Chronicles game from 2006 was also being directed by Peter Jackson as a sort of tie-in with his film. If you want to know more about the cut Halo game, Halo Chronicles, check out that first Iceberg video, link in the description. Recon Armor This coveted, rare armor suit was touched on in the first Iceberg video and for a long time could only be unlocked in Halo 3 after completing the Vidmaster series of challenges, or by playing a Halo 3 match with a Bungie player in the lobby. This unlockable cosmetic suit was legendary, and turned into a sort of gaming urban legend back in the day, and also made several appearances in RB and the Chief. Halo Waypoint This is the official forum board and news site for Halo, run by 343 Industries. You can remotely customize your Spartan, view stats from the games, and more on Halo Waypoint. Halo has gone through several entertainment expos in the past, 
with the most famous, or rather most infamous E3 trailer being the Halo 2 reveal, where a totally different, barely working build of Halo 2 is shown to the public. And the level shown was later scrapped and never saw commercial release. I wonder if there's any way we can play this unreleased demo, as it showed a very different new Mombasa, along with a semi-automatic battle rifle and more that never really made it into Halo 2 proper. Grunts with toys cutscene differences. In the opening of Delta Halo, which is a Halo 2 mission about halfway through the campaign, during the drop pod cutscene, a grunt can be seen playing with toys or grenades depending on the difficulty selected by the player. And in the anniversary remake of Halo 2, a jackal teases a grunt with varying dolls, once again depending on the difficulty. Each of these dolls actually resemble a few different characters in the Halo series. Halo 3 Rat In August 2020, a viral tweet of the Halo 3 Rat model in all its low polygon count glory took the internet by storm. Since then, Halo 3 Rat has become a Halo meme. Hunt the Truth I covered this a bit in the first iceberg. This is a Halo 5 marketing campaign that consisted of commercials that set the stage for Halo 5's plot. The campaign culminated in a canon, audiobook-styled podcast of sorts, where journalist Benjamin Giroud uncovers the truth and the origins of the Master Chief and the horrors of the Spartan program while attempting to escape Oni and government persecution. Halo 5's false advertising. While the Hunt the Truth podcast was great, it had a far better narrative than Halo 5 did and seemingly had nothing to do with the game's plot. Additionally, the commercials portrayed Master Chief and his pursuer, Spartan Locke, at gunpoint with each other. We even see a dying chief in one of these commercials, where the characters seemingly really hate each other and have some incredibly big grudges. This would have made for a dramatic and possibly great story, but instead, Halo 5's plot played it safe and was very low risk. The two Spartans threw a few punches in the actual campaign, while the narrative actually just drags on about Cortana, who has been resurrected only two missions into the game. Speedrunning. Halo is no stranger to the speedrunning community. Haloruns.com is an excellent, well-maintained repository for Halo speedrunning records. Assassinations. First seen in Halo Reach, if a player held down the melee button behind an enemy's back, a special execution animation would play where their character, whether Spartan or Elite, would violently kill their opponent in a rather close and personal, grisly manner. From knives to broken necks, these animations would enter customization territory in Halo 5, where players could select unique assassination animations they earn from rec packs. Assassinations have strangely not returned in Halo Infinite, despite fans wanting them quite a bit. Harmless, Armless Flood I am not aware which games this is possible in, but specifically in Halo CE, if you shoot both the arms off of a Flood combat form, they will rush you and will attempt to give you an armless hug. They cannot melee you with their claw or shoot you with their opposing hand, being as they don't have those things, so they propel themselves into you harmlessly. It's pretty hilarious, actually. It is possible to make harmless flood forms in Halo 2 and 3, but you gotta be a bit more clever and choose which limbs to dismember. You gotta be a surgeon about it. Boss fights. Halo is no stranger to boss fights, but they haven't always been so great. If anything, they've been... kind of... alright, I guess? In Halo 2, there's the Among Us boss fight scene with the Heretic, and the final boss with Tartarus. In Halo 3, there's the Guilty Spark fight, which I don't even think really counts as a boss fight, but I guess you can count the Scarab fights as well if you'd like. In Halo 5, there's like 9 Warden Eternal fights, and in Infinite, there are several boss fights. Infinite's boss fights are actually really good, and uh, are fairly well designed, challenging, and fun. Spartans 1, 2, 3, and 4. The Spartan Project has seen multiple different iterations as the war against both the insurrectionists in the outer colonies and the Covenant each became more desperate. Spartan Ones were the first to be developed. Also known as the Orion Project, a select group of human volunteers were physically augmented. These original super soldiers rarely if ever had used power armor in combat against human insurgents, and Sergeant Johnson was an Orion candidate where augmentations were actually unsuccessful. The Spartan 2s were developed next, where children were abducted and augmented to create extremely powerful soldiers, complete with Mjolnir power armor. Master Chief is the most notable of this breed of Spartans. Spartan 3s are a cheaper, 
less effective alternative developed as the war against the Covenant exhausted more of humanity's resources. Most of them wore SPI armor suits that lacked shielding but provided basic protection and active camo stealth technology. Now, despite this, quite a few were equipped with Mjolnir power armor, such as Noble Team from Halo Reach, if they were assembled for special missions, but most of them had those low-cost SPI suits. Spartan 4s are less effective than 2s as well, as grown adults were chosen for the program for light augmentations. This generation came after the Human Covenant War and included Buck, Locke, Palmer, and more. They came around in Halo 4 for the first time. The Guardians in Halo 5. The Guardians from Halo 5 are one of the main subjects of Halo 5's plot. I mean, they're in the tagline of the game. <laughs> they are four under-constructed super weapons that are utilized to police solar systems. Cortana attempts to utilize them in her short-lived and bizarre villain arc, and you can find a wrecked garden in the skybox of Halo Infinite, but these guys are pretty much done and dusted with. I guess humanity took them out or something. Check the lore. <laughs> Demographic shift. Starting with Halo 5 Guardians, Halo would no longer be a mature 17 and up rated game. Halo 5 and Infinite had been rated T for teen, as very little to no graphic violence is on display. The grotesque flood, along with blood and gore that Halo used to display, have largely been toned down or entirely cut out. It seems that Halo was pushing for a more family-friendly target audience, which has significantly reduced the grounded, serious nature of the plot in Halo. This has also been seen throughout the gaming industry as a whole, as games have been made to be more accessible for a family audience to sell more copies. Dual wielding. In Halo 2 and 3, players could hold two pistol-sized weapons of their choice in a multitude of combinations, allowing them to fire two weapons at one time. This feature, which was a bit of a fan favorite, has strangely never made a return since. Gouda are alien animals complete with tusks, claws, and a big tail that are native to the planet Reach. Along with the Moa, they are the only wildlife in Reach's world. Only two Gouda can be found in the campaign on the mission Nightfall, and more encounters were planned for the campaign, but ultimately cancelled. Additionally, Gouda is likely named after the Gua, a demon from Hungarian mythology, which makes sense as Reach was commonly settled by groups of Hungarian descent. Alright, now we're going to be moving on to level 2 of the iceberg. Halo Custom Edition is a version of Halo Combat Evolved for the PC. It's a free expansion for those who happen to own a Halo PC key, and it's completely free and open for download. The installation comes packaged with the Halo Editing Kit, which puts custom map development into the hands of modders. It's practically totally free as well, it's kind of abandonware at this point. Halo CEA Trollface in the first mission of Halo CE's Anniversary Remaster, you can find a troll face printed onto one of the electronic bulletin boards if you keep the updated graphics switched on. The Undead Scarab Glitch. This is yet another obscure glitch, one I didn't even know about before this video. I'm confused it's so high on the iceberg because I don't really know of anyone who does know about this, but regardless, here goes anyway. This glitch is on the Halo 3 mission, The Ark, and it involves destroying the Scarab before the player is normally intended to fight it. If done so correctly, when it enters the battlefield, it is damaged and gutted, missing half of its body. And after crawling onto the battlefield, it just kind of stands there, as all the enemies that spawn on it just fall. It's a pretty weird glitch. Sword Flying Glitch this one is far more well known than the Undead Scarab one and is popularly used in Halo 2 by those who have mastered the art of the sword fly. In this glitch, all you need is a long ranged weapon with a scope, such as a battle rifle, sniper, beam rifle, rocket launcher, or carbine, and an energy sword. Whenever a player scopes in on a distant enemy, if the reticle turns red with their long ranged weapon, if they press Y, then X quickly, and then pull the right trigger down in quick succession, the game will bug out and believe the player to be wielding the sword when the reticle is red, initiating a sword lunge from much longer ranges than the game is meant to normally allow. Banshees are no longer required. Halo 2 Super Jump Wow, Halo 2 is buggy. And yet another glitch in Halo 2, players can launch themselves into the air in a super jump by bugging out their player character on map geometry. 
Guy in a Towel, Halo 3. In the previous Iceberg video, there was an entry called Guys on Underwear, which was referring to an Easter egg that I actually found in an Easter egg hunt when gathering footage for the previous video. You can actually even see it, and I believe it's the intro video for level 6 of the Iceberg. This is the Jason Jones Easter egg. In Halo 3, on the final mission, if you use grenades and a gravity hammer, you can launch yourself across a gap to a secret area where a cutout of one of the Bungie co-founders, Jason Jones, is floating in a dark corner wearing basketball shorts. There's also, I believe, a few other appearances of this, as well as a cutout of Marty O'Donnell on Halo 3 ODST. He's doing a little dance, and you can find more information on Halo's wiki. Halo Forge Infinite Budget Glitches Halo's map editor mode, Forge, was infamous for its object and budget limits. Fortunately, some discovered how to unlock the budget in a glitch, allowing players to build with as many of a certain object as they desire. Some of these glitched maps floated around on the file share, such as Halo Reach maps with thousands of Colosseum walls that cover the ocean in the map Driver Die, or the maps where skyscrapers and a whole city was constructed out of the glitched budget, a feat not yet possible in standard gameplay due to the budget constraints, killed by a traffic cone. Halo 3's physics engine is beautiful. If an object of massive size or momentum strikes a player, it has a chance to kill them. Getting killed by random map geometry and scenery was rare, but still very possible. In this semi-viral clip from 15 years ago, a player has an unfortunate encounter with a traffic cone. Rocket Sloth Rocket Sloth is a channel run by Elijah and Luke, two Halo fans that perform asinine tasks, such as attempting to beat every Halo game without driving, shooting, and more. They make a lot of great Halo videos, and I highly recommend you check them out. Your file mentioned this. This is a quote from Carter and Halo Reach. If you stare at him long enough, the Noble Team Leader will assess the situation by admitting that your file mentioned this. Like, no joke, he'll literally say, your file mentioned this. Arbiter Cameo and Killer Instinct In the fighting game Killer Instinct, specifically in Season 3, Halo's very own Arbiter was added into the game as a fighter. His attacks include use of the Carbine, Plasma Grenades, Energy Sword, and more. You can play as both the Gilded Halo 5 version of the Arbiter model, or the classic Silver Clad Arbiter, and unfortunately he isn't voiced by the original voice talent, Keith David but you can customize them with all sorts of armor pieces from the Halo universe, so that's pretty cool, actually. 343 Guilty Sparks survived Halo 3. Yup. Apparently he survived. After getting blasted like four times with a splazer and exploding alongside the Ark, he managed to get found by a human ship, where he obliged to work for them before taking control of the ship to find the Librarian. Because why not, I suppose. Pillar of Autumn's Bridge Inconsistency. Alright. Get on your tinfoil hats. How do you explain this, Bungie? When George addresses Halsey in one scene after the mission Oni Sword Base ends, it sounds like he's calling her mom. This confused several players, where some believed him to be her son, and others read into it further that she's his surrogate mother of sorts because she created the Spartan program along with all the Spartans when they were children. The official transcript from the cutscene lists him as saying ma'am on Halopedia. So, there we go. Mystery solved. He says ma'am, not mom. So, there we go. Mystery solved. It is a really weird one, though. I remember being really confused every time I heard this line. I always had to second guess myself. Chip Stubbo. Chip Stubbo is an Australian Marine. Or is it Dubo? Chip Stubbo is an Australian Marine that appears in Halo CE through 3. Chips has a very recognizable accent that no doubt every Halo fan recognizes, and he was one of the only few survivors who managed to escape the battle and destruction of Alpha Halo. He joined Chief from the Battle of Earth to the fight on Delta Halo, and ultimately all the way up through to the battle on the Ark. He's pretty much everywhere in Halo lore, at least in the early games, and it's kind of hilarious how much this guy shows up. He ended up surviving the war, where he admits to interviewers that he and the Master Chief were best mates and in regular contact. Which is obviously not true. <laughs> what a lad. Alert carry. This is a fancy term for putting your weapon down. This alert carry allowed players to lower their weapons for interacting in pretty non-threatening ways. Which is perfect for machinimas. This feature has been included since Halo 2. Passing through invisible walls. Much like most video games, there are invisible walls throughout levels and maps that speedrunners can use and exploit to glitch their way throughout the map. 
or regular players can break out of for more play space. My personal favorite example is breaking out of the boundaries on Halo Reach's Forge World. Halo Infinite Removing Bullet Ricochet Unfortunately, the devs of Infinite removed Sniper Rifle Bullet Ricochet before the game released, but uh, it led to some pretty cool trick shots in Halo 3 while we had it. Webos Webos is the name of an easter egg cereal brand that can be found in Halo 3 ODST. Inscribed on the bottom of the cereal box is inscribed, Your Mom Loves Them. Fall Damage Reduction Tricks these exploits are used to prevent death at great fall distances. By sliding on a corner or crouching before impact, you too can prevent fall deaths in Halo CE and 2. Valhalla Wall Sigils These are similar to the Zanzibar holiday signs. Halo 3's map Valhalla has several wall etchings that correspond to certain holidays. Cursed Halo This is perhaps the most famous Halo mod of all time. Created by Inferno Plus, this is a complete Halo CE overhaul that adds weapons, enemies, vehicles, maps, and more to make Halo exceptionally cursed. My personal favorite addition is the D20 frag grenade, and my playthrough of Cursed Halo ended up kicking off my channel way back when it began. PC ports, before MCC. Halo CE and Halo 2, for the longest time, were the only computer ports for Halo until the Master Chief Collection ported most of the franchise to PC. Halo fans on PC were unfortunately out of options during their wait after Halo 2. This is also the reason why most of the popular Halo mods are from the first two games in the series, and fortunately, this is likely going to be turning around in the near future. Funny, but I dream in English. This is an easter egg phrase from Halo Reach. Sleeping grunts will occasionally utter this, which is odd considering they don't speak English in Reach, but they do in games that take place in the future of the series. They put their mamster chift into solder. Didact survived Halo 4. Despite falling into space and getting obliterated by a nuclear bomb, the Didact actually survived Halo 4, where Chief and Blue Team obliterated him again using multiple composers and, uh, well, he survived that too. Well, his digital form, I suppose. He lives on in isolation, imprisoned by the domain as told by a Halo coloring book. Yeah. They put the Dur Duct in the Chlor book. Halo 2 Desert Bus. In Penn and Teller's unreleased video game from 1995, Desert Bus, players must complete a drive from Tucson, Arizona to Las Vegas, Nevada as a bus driver. The only catch? This is done in real time, and the bus max speed is locked at a dismal 45 miles per hour. This drive takes a straight 8 hours of gameplay, and the wheel is constantly tilting the bus off road, so a player must be attentive and keep it on track. The game also can't be paused, and if you veer off the road, you have to wait to get towed back, all the way, back to Tucson. Mimicking this boring, empty drive comes a Halo 2 mod, once again created by Inferno Plus. Desert Warthog involves two teams racing across a behemoth of a map on a straight road through a desert in order to catch the enemy team's flag. If they die, they spawn all the way back at base. All in all, the drive to the enemy base takes around an hour of playtime. Club Herrera, or is it Arara? Either way, this Halo Reach easter egg is on the mission New Alexandria. Switches are situated on top of two of the skyscrapers and when they're activated, Halo easter egg songs will play in the nightclub Herrera and the Covenant occupiers will begin raving inside. One of the brutes will even play the role of a DJ. 13 Dead Spartans on the final mission of Halo Reach, there are 13 dead Spartans that litter the battlefield. They were seemingly meant to defend the shipyard as the Pillar of Autumn made an escape, and this is the only place in the game where you can find dead Spartan bodies, which indicates how grim the outcome for the Battle of Reach had become. The wild thing about these Spartans is their armor is pretty much randomized. Playing as a grunt on Outskirts, in the Halo 2 mission Outskirts, you can bug the game out to respond your co-op partner as a grunt. This is a wild glitch, and I kind of wish I would have known about it sooner, because it would have been cool to run around as a grunt on my first few playthroughs. Installation 00 Installation 00 is a Halo lore and theory channel, popularized for their very extensive breakdown videos. AI Battle Videos Halo has a diverse list of enemy and friendly NPCs. Using mods, players have managed to pit these AIs against each other in fights for videos like this one done by GameCheat13. Double Rainbow. In the Halo 4 level, Reclaimer, right next to a waterfall near the start, 
players can find a double rainbow, Kelly Gay. Kelly Gay is a novel writer who has worked on some of Halo's stories, and is currently writing the next Halo novel, Halo Renegades, Swordless Gold Elite. General Heed returns again to inform us on a glitch where you can de-sword a gold elite in Halo CE. I'm supposing this glitch was pretty popular and uh, somewhat remarkable back in the day, but I never found it when I was younger. Halo The Endless, a trademark, Halo The Endless, was filed by Microsoft, and because of that, speculation videos and theories post Halo Infinite popped up where fans believed Halo The Endless to be either the sequel game to Halo Infinite or a campaign expansion, with a focus on the new Endless species teased at the end of Halo Infinite's campaign. The trademark ended up being opposed by an indie dev studio as their new up-and-coming title, Endless Dungeon, was currently in development. John Unishek, or Uni for short, is the community manager at 343 Industries. He takes part in community playdates and appears on the Halo YouTube channel and Halo update videos, such as the update video on Halo Infinite's Forge mode, Elite vs Spartan hitboxes. With the introduction of playable Elites came new player character models. Because of this, Elites are larger targets with a much larger hitbox, though they get some advantages as a trade-off, such as health regeneration and extra health in Halo Reach. Extinction. Extinction is the most downloaded map for Halo Custom Edition, according to halomaps.com. This is a massive map and is dominated by vehicle gameplay that dart around the wreckages of a crashed UNSC ship and a disabled Covenant cruiser that were locked in battle. I was surprised by this as I thought Huge Ass was the most downloaded map, but it is in fact the second most popular on the site. Johnson is immune to the flood misconception. After the flood outbreak began overwhelming the containment facility on Installation 04, it was surprising to see Johnson make it out alive and survive to see Halo 2 and 3. In the novel Halo First Strike, it was explained that plasma grenade radiation gave Johnson a condition known as Boren Syndrome, which simply rendered him immune to flood infection. This was later retconned, where Bungie later altered the lore, saying that Boren Syndrome is actually a made-up disease, somewhat of a cover-up for Johnson and the other Spartan One's Orion augmentations. It has since been established that Johnson fought his way out of the facility successfully with a handful of survivors. This discrepancy in the lore has since caused a lot of confusion in the fanbase. Slipspace Entertainment Slipspace Entertainment is a Halo YouTube meme channel, perhaps the most popular one out there too. Sharkoi. The Sharkoi are an alien species in Halo lore that aren't seen in any of the games. This species was originally known as the Drenol, and they were cut from Halo CE back when it was a third person shooter. They were later implemented in lore where they became biomechanically altered creatures that were purpose built to fight the flood as the Forerunners became more desperate towards the end of their struggle against the Parasite. They were able to be mind controlled too, yet the Covenant kept running into trouble when they tried to mind control them themselves during the Human Covenant War. The Sharkoi were almost actually successfully used by the Covenant in several deployments, but they ended up never making it into combat. The humans instead nuked all their hives to prevent them from ever being a threat. So there you go, Sharkoi done. Now we move on to level 3 of the iceberg. Now the entries are starting to get a little more obscure, and in fact I don't think I really knew many of these. The Cut Halo CE Missions. This is an entry I added to the iceberg because it's kind of a fun fact. Halo CE's campaign was originally supposed to be 40 missions long before it was slimmed down to 25 missions, and finally the 10 missions we ended up getting. Ever since then, Halo campaigns have largely stuck to a 9 to 10 mission length, although there are some exceptions. Microsoft Sam and the Covenant. In this easter egg, you can hear the text-to-speech robotic voice of Microsoft Sam read out a few phrases insulting Bungie employees and spouting general tomfoolery on the mission The Covenant from Halo 3. At the end of this level, after you destroy the scarabs, if you wait on the right side ledge of the Citadel for a while, Sam will begin speaking. Happy Easter, Marty. I am a monument 
to all my sins. This actually isn't the only easter egg on the citadel, as the left edge plays the easter egg track, Siege of Madrigal. The voice is actually reminiscent of Chief's voice from Arby and the Chief, as they use the same exact text-to-speech robot. Veltroikik. Veltroikik is the name of the elite in Halo 5 who wrote a love poem to Spartan Palmer, and can be heard from a data pad on the mission Alliance. This love poem was actually covered in the first Iceberg video if you want to know more. Time Travel Glitch. The time travel glitch is a pretty major exploit in Halo 3. On both the Ark and the Covenant missions, if you perform various tricks involving driving up cliff faces outside of the map, a series of things will break, including enemy spawns and more. Players will have the opportunity to go back in time on the mission at the Covenant from before the Scarab tank battle all the way back to the third tower. Basically, you can break the entire level and find secret rooms and more using this exploit. Grunt in a Barrel this is a Halo Reach easter egg on the multiplayer map Penance. If you build a bowl out of objects and forage at the base of the waterfall, a grunt side of a barrel will drop into the bowl from the top of the waterfall. For some reason it doesn't have a mask or backpack and it kinda looks creepy. Master Chief's Auto Jacker Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're posting on Twitter? My main issue with Master Chief Fox Cortana is if you read the Halo novels, you'd know the spacesuit automatically jacks Master Chief off. Covenant Fringe The Covenant Fringe are all of the alien races that, while under the Covenant's control, aren't fully integrated or employed into the ranks of the Covenant. These ranks include the Yonhet, Dazrim, and more, and most of these were just tolerated by the Covenant, but not useful for combat by any means. In the Yonhet's case, they weren't used in combat as their population was too small. Skipping Cortana moments. In Halo 3, there are multiple intrusive, let's just call them Cortana moments, where Cortana calls you from beyond the curtain to tell you how much she misses you. I guess the Gravemind isn't such a good host. Speedrunners use these tricks to skip these cutscenes altogether since they are rather long and slow the player down significantly. Alright, bud. In the universally panned 2011 shooter, Duke Nukem Forever, a subtle reference to Halo is included within the game. I'm going to show you a video of it, and some of you more eagle-eyed players might just barely be able to catch it. You really gotta look closely. Time to move on! Duke, we've got your green power armor over here and ready to go. Power armor is for pussies. Um, well, okay, uh... You want a gun instead? Duke Nukem Forever was unfortunately the last game in the franchise that was once a hallmark classic boomer shooter. Unfortunately, a shaky development cycle plagued the game's final release. Halo Reach Test Maps In both Halo 3 and Reach, similar test maps have been found hidden within the game files. These test maps were used as developer playgrounds to simulate and test lighting, materials, textures, and more game assets. Why am I here? This is an easter egg on the map Beaver Creek in Halo MCC. Engraved on a cliff wall is a reference to the iconic first conversation in Red vs. Blue between Griff and Simmons. Radio Conversations in Halo Reach Throughout Halo Reach's multiplayer and firefight maps, you can find several radios hidden in secret locations. Upon playing these radios, you can hear various background characters in Reach telling the untold stories of Reach's fall. Isolation Flood Infection The Halo 3 map Isolation has a bit of a flood problem. The upper side of the map is a dull, sickly forest beset by foreigner walls on all sides. If you delve deep into the lower level caves on the map, you'll find the reason for the dismal appearance of the forest. The caves are completely covered in flood biomass, and if players wait long enough, they'll watch flood masses rise to the grass at the surface. It's a really cool detail in Halo 3 that demonstrates how the flood spreads as it slowly infects and corrupts the map itself. And uh, it's actually pretty cool because it's, it's a very subtle thing that many players miss. Well, Arbiter, I... I... I think you're cute too. 
Fistful of Arrows. Halo, Fistful of Arrows is a fan-made graphic novel available on Bungie.org. Ever wonder what happened to June after he evacuated with Halsey at the end of Halo Reach? This 100-page graphic novel finally gives us a chance to see it. The art for this book looks amazing, and a soundtrack was actually composed for readers to listen to it while they read, but it actually isn't canon, making this perhaps one of the best pieces of fan fiction ever produced. It is written and drawn by Levi Hoffmeyer. Scrapped Vehicles Between the Halo 4 Revenant, the UNSC Gunboat, Halo 2 Mongoose, the Infinite Goshog, there are tons of unfinished or cut vehicles from the Halo series. If you want to try out these cut vehicles yourself, many of them, including the Kodiak APC and UNSC Watercraft, are included in Arma 3's Operation Trebuchet Halo mod, which I've played on this channel before in case you're curious. Cut Weapons Halo has a long history of cut weapons. And not just the ones hidden in Halo Infinite's game files such as the Fuel Rod Gun or Covenant Carbine. For example, Halo CE alone has dozens of cut weapons including energy shields, machetes, chain guns, submachine guns, and my favorite, the microwave gun. Although apparently it never had a purpose or function before being cut. I just like the name, okay. I kind of like to wonder what this or other weapons would actually have been capable of before they were cut. There's also documentation referring to a flashbang grenade that was supposed to be included in Halo 2. Destroyed warthogs with usable turrets. Very rarely throughout the Halo campaigns, there are some warthogs that have been disabled or damaged significantly to the point to where they can't drive, but their turrets still function. This is a bit of odd form of set dressing that provides the power of the warthog's chain gun for the player without being able to drive it. And the only example I can really think of is the one by the downed pelican on the Halo 3 mission, The Ark. Which is really weird because that's the only appearance of it in the entire game, I'm pretty certain. Hidden Black Spartan. This is a reference to an all-black Spartan hidden outside the map on Halo Reach's final mission. This is perhaps used for a technical reason, but we don't totally understand. Perhaps it was a testing model of some kind. Who knows. 343 Industries exists in the Halo lore. Yes, this is actually true. And their products include the Fotis armor suit, the 343 weapon skins, and the Unicorn Fist weapon skins. They have labs in Kirkland, Washington on Earth, which is also where the real life 343 Industries is based. Several cosmetics in Infinite are also produced by 343 as well. They kind of make the more goofy cosmetics, so that's fun. Deleted levels and maps. Halo is no stranger to cutting deleted maps and levels, especially as the series is also no stranger to rough development cycles. As I mentioned earlier, Halo CE lost 75% of the planned missions, and Halo 3's plot was supposed to take place at the end of Halo 2 before Crunch caused the game to end on a cliffhanger. One of the most well-known cut missions is Guardian Forest from Halo 3, where players would fight a large forerunner entity known as the Guardian within the forest where the multiplayer map Guardian now resides. Rookie does nothing for most of ODST. Everyone's favorite ODST protagonist from Halo 3 ODST doesn't really do much of anything in the plot of the game. Aside from walk around town and fight Covenant patrols while looking for clues on his squad's whereabouts, all he does is escort Dare and the Engineer out of town. While this is a vital mission to humanity's victory, the Rookie only really accomplishes this one mission. The rest of his squad fought throughout the entire battle all over town, as he napped through pretty much most of the game. Infinite Ammo Glitches There are several glitches in Halo Combat Evolved where players can perform tricks to preserve their spent rounds. This is reminiscent to pocket reloading in the same game, where you can reload a weapon while firing another one. Halo Fanon Halo Fanon is a wiki and repository of Halo fan fiction. Fans write their own non-canon stories about Halo here. How do elites eat? This is a question I've had for years now. These split-faced dudes don't seem to be able to use their teeth properly as their mouth is shaped so strangely. I can't find much from just the wikis and the resources I currently have, but they no doubt eat as I do know they are not solar powered. Regardless, the question has been on the minds of fans for years. References to Aliens, the franchise. It's plain to see that Halo has a lot of its design inspired by the Aliens movie franchise. Between Sergeant Johnson's look-alike, Sergeant Opone, from Aliens, the designs of the Marines, and the presence of infectious alien parasites, 
Halo mirrors the film series very closely. Many have also pointed to Halo being inspired by Starship Troopers, and I can see the resemblances there too. Anime Influences It's a little known fact that Halo was influenced greatly by anime, specifically Master Chief's suit, which is kind of inspired and very similar to a line of Gundam characters, specifically a green suit known as the Spartan, which was created in the late 80s, long before Halo. The concept artist for Master Chief's first design, Shi Kai Wang, was influenced by anime character designs such as the ones in Gundam from the start. Failed Halo Killers When there's a king, there's always someone coming for the crown. In this case, there are many shooter games that released in the early 2000s that aspire to dethrone Halo as the biggest shooter game. One prominent example is Warhammer 40K's FPS, Fire Warrior. Play Magazine stated in their very glowing review, Who Needs Halo? The game is actually pretty awful and fell into irrelevance, because I know none of y'all have heard of it. Some other failed Halo killers from the time you may have heard of include Haze and Killzone. Although Killzone is kind of a bit of a cult classic. Vacations. This is a classic Halo secret hunting term that refers to when players broke out of the boundaries of maps. The glitch that does nothing. This Halo CE glitch is pretty weird. If you drive your warthog up a certain cliff face on the mission Halo, you will do nothing. More specifically, your player and vehicle will freeze and you are unable to move or perform any actions, and your character model freezes and locks up entirely. If you don't slide back down the cliff, you're pretty much trapped there, so don't try this unless you're willing to restart. Cold Snap. I just like saying it like that. This is another popular Halo Custom Edition modded map, this time in the cold Arctic canyons of Installation 04. This one is less popular than Extinction and Huge Ass, however, it's still pretty popular. Origins of Infection Game Mode The Infection Game Mode that we know and love that released with Halo 3 was not entirely a unique Bungie creation. It is based on a fan-made custom game type from Halo 2 called Zombies. The match is done on Team Slayer, where green team plays as zombies and red team plays as humans. The humans could only use pistols or ballistic weapons depending on the rules, and zombies only use energy swords. Upon death, human team players would switch teams over to the zombie team. This fan-made mode was a cult classic in Halo 2's Xbox Live days, and stands as a testament to the importance of custom content in Halo. Operation Red Flag Operation Red Flag is a canonical last-ditch effort to save humanity and hopefully bring a quick end to the Human Covenant War. It was drawn up in 2552, as humanity was very much on the back foot and very close to losing everything. The plan was to get Captain Keys to lead a small fleet to bait a Covenant cruiser into being boarded by Spartan 2s and ODSTs. After boarding the ship, the plan would entail setting course for high charity, and capturing one of the Covenant's prophets so they could sue for peace. Unfortunately, this plan did fall through due to the loss of Reach and the Pillar of Autumn leaving for Installation 04. Dazreem The Dazreem are a fish-like species from an ocean world known as Reem. They had a great knowledge of the Forerunners due to the ancient Forerunner cities that were sunken under the waves of the planet. The Dazreem traded their knowledge of the Forerunners with the prophets of the Covenant for an alliance and ended up remaining as part of the Covenant Fringe. Ungoy's Human Media Black Market The Ungoy, or Grunts, traded captured human entertainment media on their black market. This involves soap operas, sitcoms, and more. This calls back to conflicts of reality, where souvenirs are taken from foreign countries by soldiers involved in invasion. I wonder what shows from our time the Grunts stole to sell on the market. The Meddlers in Halo CE Anniversary, 343 Guilty Spark tells in one of the terminals hidden in the campaign of a ship crashing 60,000 years after the Halo rings fired. Apparently, the sentient species that piloted this ship are unknown, and no records of them were found in Forerunner databases on the Halo ring. Since this terminal, several mentions and hints of unknown alien species, perhaps from outside the Milky Way, that meddle with Forerunner creations and worlds have been found sprinkled throughout the series. All these unknown alien visitors have been labeled as the Meddlers, I wonder what these creatures are though, and why they appeared on the first ring in 40,000 BCE before disappearing again. Slipstream Space Slipstream Space, or Slip Space for short, is the manner of travel in which ships can jump from place to place around the galaxy so quickly. It is a dimensional subdomain, 
whatever that means, where ships can enter in order to commit to faster than light travel. Most sci-fi universes come up with their own means to accomplish faster than light travel, and this is the canonical mechanism that allows vessels in the Halo universe to do so. I don't totally understand it, partially because it's not in our observable universe and kind of confusing, but feel free to read up on it if you'd like to. Halo vs. Counter-Strike This is a dated and I mean very dated and low quality flash animation that uses basic tweening motions and crude art common from low budget internet cartoons of the time. This video is quite literally a time capsule and it contains references to Red vs. Blue, the original Counter-Strike mod, gaming culture from the time, cringe culture from the time, and more. This video is a re-upload of the animation that is hosted on Newgrounds, and it appears to have been a bit of a classic amongst early Halo fans who watched it as kids while the internet was still coming of age, and Newgrounds was perhaps one of the most popular websites for people looking for entertainment back then. GRD Helmet the GRD helmet is a cosmetic that was cut from Halo Reach and appeared throughout easter eggs and marketing images until finally being added to Reach in Halo MCC in 2021, 11 years after Reach released. Backwards Loading The original Halo CE loading screen is iconic, but in this obscure video, it seems someone is running Halo on a toaster oven. Now we move on to level 4 of the iceberg. It's at this point where, well, a lot of these things are just gonna get crazy. r slash shitty halo lore. This is a niche community on reddit that shares memes about halo lore to ruin the fun for everyone. Just like this gold nugget right here. Hidden marine and 343 guilty spark. Deep in the woods outside of the level 343 guilty spark, you can find a marine chilling out in the forest, totally unarmed. This is the character model of Mendoza, who loads into the flood reveal cutscene shortly after the level begins. It seems Bungie just loaded him in early. Halo CE calls Master Chief Cyborg in the code. Master Chief reference models in code in Halo CE refers to the Master Chief as a cyborg. This is bizarre, as he isn't as much part man, part machine, but more so just a biologically augmented man in an armored suit, and this does bring up the question that the chief was perhaps originally intended to be a cyborg or robotic man-machine hybrid of some kind. Grunts and CE also shout, it's that cyborg, whenever they detect you, and the mission description for the mission keys reads, stage a one cyborg assault on a covenant ship and bring back the captain. I thought you'd be taller wasn't an insult. In Halo 4, Upon encountering the Chief for the first time, Spartan Palmer quips, Thought you'd be taller. This is somehow perhaps the most controversial line in Halo 4, and fans thought it was pretty ignorant and rude, and did not like her because of it, <laughs> to put it lightly. Actually seeing the UNSC hero in person likely shocked Palmer a bit, and after all the stories she may have heard, so therefore joking about how he could have been taller, though he obviously is like 8 feet tall or something, is kind of sort of a non-insult, but a lot of people read into this very differently and they really don't like Palmer. It's just kind of like a playful jab, if anything. Uh, I don't know why I'm breaking down a random line of dialogue, but people people did not like the thought you'd be taller thing. They, woof, that one, was a, that one was a doozy. The Arbiter killed Noble Six. This entry refers to the final cutscene of Halo Reach, where we watch Noble Six fight off a squad of elites until they eventually overpower and kill him, or her depending on how you customize your Spartan. Regardless, at the end of Noble Six's death scene, right before the scene transition, an elite walks barely into frame while holding an energy sword in their left hand. Instantly, speculation led players to believe this elite to be the future Arbiter from the Halo trilogy. But unfortunately for fans, the Arbiter wasn't present on the surface to watch Noble Six die. Not only would the Arbiter have been aboard a ship preparing to chase down the Pillar of Autumn, 
This elite's character model is a field marshal or zealot elite of sorts, and therefore not the Arbiter. Further, it's not even necessarily true that the Arbiter holds their sword in their left hand, as no part of canon or Halo wikis or anything mentions this. Nor does the Arbiter hold his sword in his left hand in the game. Case closed, it wasn't him. But didn't stop a lot of people from having these wild speculations. Demonic Marines. This is a Halo 2 anniversary glitch, presented once again by General Heed. I swear half of this iceberg is glitches he's found. Seriously, go give him some support and drop him a sub for all his efforts. If you kill enough Marines for them to turn on you in a section of Cairo Station, the Marines will go active camo. In an anniversary graphics, a terrifying bug is produced. I wonder what causes these texture glitches, because they're definitely going to be the source of some of my sleep paralysis demons from here on out. How did Sergeant Johnson survive Halo CE? This is a question fans had for years, and as I described earlier, the complications of Johnson's Spartan 1 augmentations, coupled with his ability to fight his way out of the flood containment facility, helped him escape the flood. But this doesn't answer the question how he made it off the ring without getting obliterated. In the Halo novel First Strike, Johnson met up with three fellow Marines, Lieutenant Haverson, Corporal Locklear, and Petty Officer Polanski and escaped the ring on Pelican. They met up with the Master Chief in space, and proceeded to take control of the nearby Covenant capital ship, the Ascendant Justice, and landed on Reach. They picked up the surviving Spartan twos along with Catherine Halsey, and made a quick escape from the planet. On their mission, Chief and the other Spartan twos assaulted a Covenant space station and destroyed it, claiming an entire 500 ship fleet before they returned back to Earth for the events of Halo 2. Killing 343 Guilty Spark without the Spartan laser. This is a hoax. Back in the day it was claimed by some that you could kill Guilty Spark at the end of Halo 3 without this blazer, but this is in fact untrue. Chinese food on high ground. In trash piles on the ground in Halo 3, on the map High Ground, and the mission The Storm, you can find Chinese takeout boxes and perfectly good noodles ruined. Messages on the assault bomb. This is an old one I remember. In Halo 2, 3, and Reach, on the assault game type, the bomb would have messages scribbled onto it depending on the map and game. This is a reference to bombs and artillery shells that have messages inscribed on them in real life for use in war. Maybe we'll get to see them again in Infinite someday, if assault ever gets added in Season 9. In the Halo 3 mission Floodgate, there is a marine that holds a pistol to his head while rambling emotionally. He keeps muttering and hinting at the fact that he wants to end the game early to himself. He killed his entire squad after they became infected by the Flood, and was driven to insanity because of it, hoping he'd done his squad mates a favor. Dang. Halo used to be dark. In war, especially with one involving a horror as evil as the Flood, Mental health and innocence are obviously going to be casualties, and it's interesting to see how Halo 3 attempted to reflect this. Modern Halo unfortunately doesn't show war in this mature light anymore. This troubled Marine's fate is unknown. Hopefully he made it out. British Cortana Cortana in Halo was originally supposed to have a British accent. This can be heard through some of Cortana's lines, where she famously tells 343 Guilty Spark to sod off, despite Jin Taylor lacking a British accent whatsoever. Hidden Trigates In Halo 2, there are a few texture glitches that often resemble large triangle-shaped texture swatches that appeared out of place. These were mostly located outside of normal boundaries on the level, but one does exist on coagulation if you light up a patch of cave. As these were hard to find, and mostly required vacations to find, many postulated that these textures might have been secret gateways to, well, all sorts of things. Trigates were tied to several other Halo 2 urban legends and mysteries, including the floating Delta Halo button and the gold warthog that we covered in the previous video. Some theorized that interdimensional travel and secret areas would take place with these, but of course this is all nonsense. These are simply bugged out textures. The Cave of a Thousand Faces. 
The Cave of a Thousand Faces is an out-of-bounds section of the Halo 3 mission Sierra 117. If players break out of the map, they can find a secret cave that ended up implicated in a sort of urban legend or mystery of sorts. People say they can see faces in the walls of the cave if you look closely into the textures of the cave walls, but this is likely just a sort of optical illusion, especially as this cave would later be used in the following cutscene of a pelican arriving into Crow's Nest carrying the chief on board. This is an obscure find outside of the map and nothing more. Halo 3 Epsilon. Within Bungie, a private copy of Halo 3 was distributed to Microsoft employees starting around August 10th, 2007, around a month before the release of Halo 3 to the public. This version of the game seems more like an extended demo of the game and features a single campaign mission, Savo Highway, along with six multiplayer maps that could be played on Forge and multiplayer. Now you might be wondering if you could play this build. Players from early 360 days actually managed to obtain copies of it somehow, which leads us conveniently into our next entry on the iceberg. Player that got banned until 9999 AD. I didn't believe this entry when I first read it, but apparently it's actually true. Anonymous Xbox user, known only by their gamer tag as Scar, played Halo 3 Epsilon, you know, the leaked demo I just mentioned, while Xbox Live was switched on. As consequences for their actions, their account was banned from Xbox Live until December 31st, 9999. Unfortunately, it is rumored that Scar may never live to see the day that their account is unbanned. Folks, a moment of silence for another soul lost to the banhammer. Religious Symbolism Halo is no stranger to the topic of religion. The main antagonists of the game worship ancient aliens and are known simply as the Covenant, so it was only a matter of time before connections were drawn between the game and real-world religions. Christian and religious terms and iconography soak the plot and universe of Halo. Noah and the Flood, or in this case, the Halo Flood, the Ark that destroys the Flood, the Prophets, Mjolnir Armor, Many plot elements share names with religious topics. If players dig deeper, the lore of Halo shares many parallels with biblical stories. Many have drawn up conspiracies and theories that there is some greater significance of this religious symbolism, and I personally see some similarities between the historical crusades and the human covenant war, but not much beyond vague similarities. Could there be some hidden? Subliminal religious message that Bungie intended players to read into or discover? Unlikely, but it isn't surprising that these theories exist as everything up to the title of the franchise has some form of religious significance. Pan Cam Mode In several of the Halo games, you can activate a mode called Pan Cam Mode where you can break out of the view from your character and go into, well, anywhere. You can fly around, view out-of-bounds areas, and more. Apartment 117 is a fairly obscure and somewhat forgotten animated series that was planned and slated to be hosted on Halo Waypoint. This series entered development in 2010 and was a project spearheaded by Powerhouse Animation alongside 343 Industries. After the trailer and first episode were released, 343 Industries removed the episode and canceled the project. The first episode is totally viewable on YouTube, and it follows two roommates, one of whom is obsessed with Halo as they take a trip to get groceries. Hmm? I can't trust you to do anything. Every time I ask you to do something, you screw it up. Remember when you were supposed to pick up my car? You completely destroyed it. I didn't destroy it. I made it better. You turned it into one of those groundhog things. It's a warthog. I was trying to help you. What are you going to do in the Covenant Land? All right. I'm going to the grocery store, and you're coming with me. I suppose this serves as a form of lost media, or found lost media, I suppose. It's certainly a bizarre and somewhat cringy animated short, and I think we're lucky to have witnessed it here. Halo 2 Vista Map Editor In the Halo 2 PC port, also known as Halo 2 Vista, which is known as such because Windows Vista was the current iteration of Windows operating system at the time, you can find a Halo 2 Vista map editor packaged within the files of the game. Since then, 
Modders have developed custom maps and mods for Halo 2, up until the release of Halo MCC on PC. The Halo modding community on PC relied on this and Halo Custom Editions map tools such as Gorilla, Sapien, and more for years. Thankfully, MCC has received proper mod support along with mod tools along with a full release on Steam. Pistol Kanji On the magnums in Halo CE and Halo 3, Japanese, Chinese, and Korean characters are etched into parts of the weapons. They translate to either the number 7 or the word strength or power. This alludes to the fact that the magnum is a very devastating weapon. At least more so in Halo CE, though in Halo 3, it still fires a pretty beefy round. Crazy Marine and ODST. One of the wounded marines at the Uplift Reserve, which is pretty much a zoo of sorts, gets lost in their crackpot theory about the food chain and how the zoo they're in isn't so different from their reality. Well, technically it's a corporate funded wildlife reserve. Semantics! This whole place is one big cage! Listen, Marine, you're wounded. You gotta try and relax. Except we, we're the zebras, get it? All fenced in and ready for the slaughter. And the Covenant? They're the lions! Rawr! Battle Rifle Plasma Rifle. In a Halo 2 cutscene before the start of the mission, Sacred Icon, as Tartarus's Phantom blasts the Sentinel Enforcer, if you manage to break your camera free using modding, you would actually be able to see that the Phantom turret is actually a combined plasma rifle, battle rifle hybrid, or BRPR. The battle rifle is actually not a functioning weapon, but an object that is strangely, quote unquote, holding the plasma rifle. Otherwise, the plasma rifle would fall down. This is kind of a duct tape popsicle stick type nonsense here, and you can actually wield and fire this weapon through modding as well. Halo 4 Drones Several NPCs have been cut from Halo 4, one of which were the drones, which have unfortunately last been seen in Halo Reach. There is concept art of this cut enemy, but unfortunately, they never seem to have made it into any build of the game. Killer Moa Left over in the game files of Halo Reach, modders have found that Moas may have actually had the ability to attack players and or enemies at some point. This can be seen through the unused combat animations that they have, and here, General Heed combined their animations and attacks as can be seen in this video. Infinite Rockets and ODST, once again demonstrated best by General Heed, but this time in a very old video of his from 2009, no less. There's a hidden easter egg of four rocket launchers, each with 1,000 rounds of ammunition and two mongooses. This easter egg only triggers on the mission Coastal Highway, with four players on legendary difficulty with the Iron Skull on. Much like in Halo 3, this easter egg was intended to assist players in achieving the Vidmaster Deja Vu achievement, but in Halo 3, four ghosts were given to players for their final run on the last mission. Eric Nyland Mr. Nyland is an American novelist who wrote three prominent early Halo novels. He authored Halo, The Fall of Reach, First Strike, and Ghosts of Onyx, among many other stories and novels that contributed greatly to the Halo universe in the early days of the franchise. Cut Skulls Throughout the franchise, Easter Egg Skulls have been cut or limited in functionality. In Halo 3, an assassin skull on the mission Cortana would be given no use and have much of its functionality cut. A few skulls were cut from Halo 3 ODST as well. One was cut from HCE Anniversary as well, where gun sounds would be replaced by 343 staff speaking the gun noises like bang 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 bang. But the strangest cut skull doesn't come in the form of a pickup object. There was a cut scene in Halo CE where the chief was supposed to burn through the proto-grave mine Captain Keys' skull with a flamethrower to obtain the captain's neural implants. This gruesome scene was soon cut due to the flamethrower being cut from the game, only to return in the PC port Halo Custom Edition, UNSC Diver. In the Halo 2 map Fathom, submerged in an out-of-bounds pool of water is a static object of a yellow diver. This strange easter egg eventually was turned into a Forge object when Forge released. Weapons Card Throughout Halo 3 ODST, the player may stumble across a bit of scrap paper that displays silhouettes of what appear to be cut Covenant weapons. 
It is up to your imagination what these weapons were intended to become, but it's interesting to see these littered throughout a human town for some reason. Halo 2 Cartographer This entry refers to Halo 2 Project Cartographer, a fan-developed and improved version of Halo 2 Vista. Included are modded custom maps, a working infection mode, gun game, restored online servers, and much more completely free and available for download. This version of Halo 2 was, for a time, the only modern port of Halo 2 available until the MCC was ported to PC. Nuclear Bomb Glitch This entry, in my opinion, should be far lower. There is only one video on this topic that I could find, and it is completely in Spanish and serenaded by Let the Bodies Hit the Floor. This is how you know you've traveled back in time. In short, if one player removes the arms of another player in Halo 3 Forge, and then throws a grenade, a bright flash akin to a nuclear bomb will occur, rather than the standard explosion. Removing Spartan arms is actually a separate glitch and can be done by grabbing a weapon in Forge mode while the other player is attempting to pick it up. This is a really strange and very obscure glitch. I'm surprised it's even on this iceberg. Yan Mi Sniper In a previous entry, I mentioned that the Covenant enemy species have proper names. In this case, the Yanmi is the actual term used for drones. If you thought jackal snipers were bad, sleep well at night knowing we barely avoided sniper drones in Halo 4 before all drones were cut from the game entirely. Rooster Teeth Vending Machines The Rooster Teeth Vending Machines are something I covered in the previous Iceberg video. On the Halo 2 map turf, red and blue soda machines with the mascots from the Rooster Teeth logo can be found on the map as set dressing that do nod to the company that produces red versus blue. He was my lover. He was my lover. It appears this easter egg dialogue plays more frequently whenever the I would have been your daddy skull is active. Mind transfer. This is a lore device in Halo wherein a sentient mind is transferred into another being or object. Examples include human brain tissue being used to create artificial intelligence in the UNSC, Forerunner composers digitizing living creatures into Promethean soldiers, and the flood harvesting memories from assimilated beings. Marvin Mubuto is a marine from the extended Halo universe. After the flood was unleashed on Alpha Halo, Sergeant Mubuto became separated from his squad. When the Monitor found him, and teleported him to the library in an attempt to reclaim the Index. Mabuto fought through the horrors of the flood-invested chambers of the library until the Index was in sight, but unfortunately, due to his really weak marine body armor, Marvin fought until he was thrashed and torn to pieces, because he wouldn't go quietly, and in fact was not able to be infected by the flood because his pieces were, you know, not able to be reanimated. This is a really interesting detail in the novel Halo the Flood where Chief finds his dog tags and identifies him toward the end of the library mission. Not only was the player not the first in the library, but they were likely just a few hours behind from running into the Lone Marine. This story is actually really wild to me because imagine yourself, like put yourself in this Marine's shoes. He's just some lowly foot soldier who gets separated, gets teleported to the dark, mysterious facility of the library, and is forced to fight his way through the flood. It's actually impressive he almost made it to the Index entirely on his own. Now I move on to level 5 of the iceberg. Things are going to get even more obscure. Cut Scarab from Halo 4. Halo 4 likely was planned to have a Scarab fight during Spartan Ops. This is strange as there is already a Covenant super vehicle players are meant to take down in the campaign. And that is the Lich, which is a sort of Covenant flying fortress. It's buried in the files and it's up to speculation how this enemy super unit would have actually been implemented in H4. Halo 4 cut dialogue. Yet again, more cut content from Halo 4, which is perhaps the most dialogue-heavy game in the series. Well, at least as far as the Chief and Cortana are concerned. Therefore, it isn't surprising that there is cut dialogue and voice lines from the campaign. But what is surprising is that there's enough to fill a 45-minute-long video. 
Just how you like them. Big, ugly, and overflowing with machine guns and rocket launchers. I should add that there are loads of cut dialogue from pretty much all of the Halo games, so in a way this entry should refer to the franchise as a whole. Pre-Xbox Halo. In the previous iceberg, I explained that Halo was originally slated for release on the Macintosh computer, and that lots of content ended up scrapped before the final release. Originally, Halo was planned to be a strategy game, similar to their previous game release, Myth, before they turned it into a third-person shooter. Eventually, it was refitted as a first-person shooter for the Xbox. Wonder how Halo would have been if it was released as a strategy game way back when, instead of having a spin-off RTS series in the form of the Halo Wars games. Empty Room on Sword Base. Yet another really obscure secret area, this time on the Halo Reach multiplayer map Sword Base. Behind a secret door is a secret room that you can glitch the camera into. On the Halo Reach beta, on the same secret room, there is a 2D cutout of a piece of concept art of Dr. Halsey. Interestingly enough, this room ended up being used in the campaign mission that takes place on Sword Base, where Noble Team meets Halsey for the first time. This is wild because it's an easter egg in a limited time beta that hints to the future purpose of the secret room when the campaign and full game ultimately releases. It's almost like a bit of a spoiler from the devs, locked away outside of the map where nobody can find it. Other Ghosts of Halo Ah yes, back to Halo hauntings. The Ghost of Lockout, and slightly less well known Ghost of Turf, are among the most infamous Halo urban legends. These ghost-like entities puppeted Spartans and elites in multiplayer, and attacked players in unexplained ways, often lacking animations entirely. There are actually more reported ghosts across Halo maps, including Halo 3's ghosts of Sandtrap, Valhalla, and Blackout, along with Halo Reach's ghost of Forge World, and strangely the campaign mission, The Package. These are just a few examples of some of the phantom phenomenons that haunted fans in the Bungie era of Halo. Sangheili Point Defense Gauntlet This entry is actually very cool. As seen in early builds of Halo CE and the Halo CE first look trailer at E3, elites had a point defense gauntlet, or wrist-mounted energy shields similar to the ones jackals use. We can see in the trailer a red elite, or elite major, gripping a sword in one hand and a shield in his opposite arm. And according to Halo Alpha, these shields ended up being replaced by the full body personal energy shields, while the point defense gauntlet was given to the jackals instead. There are other events in Halo canon where elites have used point defense shields, such as the shipmaster utilizing one in a duel within the first Halo graphic novel, Jonesy the Cat. This is a Halo CE easter egg where signs of a missing calico cat that only answers to Jonesy are posted on bulletin boards throughout the Pillar of Autumn. This easter egg reappears in Halo 3, where more posters state, still missing my cat Jonesy. And finally, in Halo CE Anniversary, Jonesy is found. On several message boards on the Autumn, 10 years after CE released, an image of an opossum is pinned with the phrase, Cat Found, inscribed onto it. Jonesy is a reference to Jones, the ship cat aboard the Nostromo from the movie Alien. Canadian coin on Snowbound. On the map Snowbound from Halo 3, within the active camo tunnel, a Canadian dollar coin is buried underneath the active camo that spawns on the map. This coin is also nicknamed a loony, due to the engraving of a great northern loon diving bird. In Canada, it is customary to bury a lucky loony under the ice during national Canadian ice hockey and curling games. Missing person poster. In Halo 3's campaign, Specifically on the missions The Storm and Floodgate, missing posters depicting images of Jason Jones, the co-founder of Bungie, can be found littering the battlefield. Explanations for the Ghosts of Halo In the previous Iceberg video, I detailed some of the more probable explanations for ghosts and hauntings in Halo. However, amateur research on the topic has produced numerous conclusions. Since the original video of the Ghost of Lockout went viral, sightings and claimed paranormal activity within the Halo games escalated quickly. Hoaxes were generated, written claims and filmed evidence was released, and with that, the popularity of the urban legend grew far more unexplainable, especially as ghosts were seen on many maps. Bungie has actually confirmed at least one oversight in map development, 
you know, the Black Spartan on Halo Reach's Pillar of Autumn mission that we talked about earlier, which has been verified by Bungie to have been a sort of mistake, a bit of a leftover from the development of the level. Is it possible that the ghost entities that did not move or attack could be explained by code artifacts that were accidentally left over from map development? Perhaps this is true, but it doesn't explain the more active and scarier ghosts, so to speak. Many of the more dangerous or threatening ghosts are likely just hoaxes or scary stories, such as the ghost of Valhalla that apparently haunts the downed pelican on the map with an energy sword. Perhaps the most probable explanation for the more frightening sightings, such as the one on Lockout, where a ghost slides around the map killing players, is that extreme network errors or lag combined with a new player joining the game causes a glitch where this new player becomes bugged out, contributing to their lack of appearance on the scoreboard, lack of name tag, and glitched out abilities. I've seen a video where players artificially produced a ghost on Lockout by purposely disrupting their network connections while inviting new players to the game. But I have left out one possible explanation. In the previous conclusions, we've assumed the hauntings to be false, or not actually produced by the paranormal. What if some of these stories were due to ghosts, actually haunting the servers? We don't have an absolutely concrete investigation delving into this issue, and while I assume the ghosts of Halo are merely glitches, it is unknown for certain what causes all of these sightings. Dominion, Halo 4. This is perhaps my favorite mode from Halo 4. Dominion is a big team battle mode that only appeared in Halo 4 before it was strangely never seen again. The objective of Dominion is to capture and hold bases for points. From there, bases can be upgraded or fortified, which generates shield walls, turrets, and vehicle spawns. Dominion usually resulted in intense, desperate battles over bases across the map. Beta designs. Beta designs refers to the difference of designs between the betas and full releases of the Halo games. Most notable are the differences in the designs of Halo CE before it was transitioned into an FPS. The Flood Forum, hashtag off topic. The Flood Forum is an off topic forum that used to be part of Bungie.net. Halo fans circulated memes and joke posts starting in 2004 on that off topic community. Sadly, the Flood Forum went offline as Bungie would no longer be working on Halo and therefore no longer needed the forum. Also on Bungiepedia, a history of notable events on the Flood Forum has been documented and maintained. It must have been a really nostalgic place for some if they recorded all the events that went down within it. Energy Sword Sunday. Continuing on the theme of Halo memes, Energy Sword Sunday is a meme that started in 2017 and grew in popularity throughout 2018. It started on Twitter, and from there it kind of snowballed, anime referencing Halo 3. In 2008, Season 1, Episode 4 of the anime, To Love Rue, featured a very extensive reference to Halo 3. Perhaps the animators were fans. Here's perhaps the only clip of it on YouTube. <laughs> Halo NVIDIA commercial. With the release of Halo on the way, NVIDIA and Bungie partnered in this 2000 advertisement for the new GeForce 2 GTS graphics card. Apart and we evacuated to the surface of Halo. I was worried we'd left all our best hardware behind. No, I'm not talking about military hardware like jeeps, tanks, or dropships. I'm talking about graphics hardware. Now that we're waging an epic guerrilla war against the Covenant Horde, I'm sure glad I'm packing an NVIDIA GeForce 2 GTS. Halo 2 Conversations from the Universe This game manual shipped with the Halo 2 Limited Collector's Edition. It details background lore for the Halo series, including the first mention of the Sharkoi, which is the alien species we covered earlier. The first mention of the mysterious Meddler species is also in this manual, as well as some of the early usage of Covenant proper names. Cancelled Halo Mega Bloks Game Hagar is a codename for the cancelled Halo Mega Bloks game that was canned in 2013. This game seems to be reminiscent of the LEGO Star Wars games, but more focused on third-person shooter gameplay along with construction elements. The Mega Bloks company has since been renamed to Mega Constructs. This is a strange side project when you think about it because it seems that this is a Halo game targeted towards children, for a toy line of a mostly mature rated franchise at the time. I'm not surprised it was cancelled, but it would have been cool to see it released. 
Dual wield swords. Dual wielding energy swords is something fans have wanted to do since the weapon's inception, especially as dual wielding pistol sized weapons was added to Halo 2. There is also the existence of an unfinished cutscene from Halo 3, where an untextured arbiter uses two energy swords at once. This can be seen in the Halo 3 Vidoc. Sadly, we never got dual wieldable swords in vanilla Halo. Halo 1 Pistol on Tombstone On the Halo 2 multiplayer map Tombstone, you can find a Halo CE Magnum behind a fence among some UNSC crates. It's cool to see both the Halo CE and Halo 2 pistols appear in one game. It's possibly a cool reference saying that the Magnum isn't gone, it's just simply in storage. The Dervish The Arbiter was originally supposed to be called the Dervish, but the name was changed because Bungie was attempting to avoid getting Halo confused as an allegory to the conflicts in the Middle East. For those of you who don't know, Dervishes are members of Muslim faith who take vows of poverty for their faith, and replacing the name with the Arbiter was a far more appropriate choice. Christian Allegory We've already seen the religious overtones and references from the Halo series, and so has this one user from a Bungie.net forum post, except they flushed it out further and made several theories. A theory lists the Bible verse John 1.17, believing Chief's name is Spartan ID to be referring to a greater meaning to the character. This rabbit hole gets crazy. I highly recommend you look up these theories on your own if you want to know more. Cortana on High Ground On the map High Ground in Halo 3, if you watch the laptop screens in the damaged bunker near the missile turret, an image of Cortana will flash on the TV screen once per two minutes. Person on Standoff Along with the man on the moon easter egg on this Halo 3 map, there's a 2D cutout of Travis Brady, a Bungie 3D artist, in the background near the radar dishes. Halo CE Demo, Xbox. Much like many past games, Halo CE got a demo for PC. Lesser known and far rarer is the Xbox Halo CE Demo. These demos were shipped on the Xbox Exhibition Demo Disc and on one of the Xbox Magazine Gaming Discs. This demo was likely many fans' first introduction to Halo, and the famous Johnson Halo ad came out with the PC demo. These demos are very obscure pieces of Halo history. Jake Courage. Jake Courage was a war photographer working with the UNSC. He took many photos that ended up being used in the Believe marketing campaign for Halo 3, which is why he and many of his photos are only portrayed in scale model dioramas. He famously captured photos of the Chief before his death to a grenade in New Mombasa in 2552. Removed Ambient Life There are dozens of fantasy creatures and life that have been removed from the Halo games during development. Examples of these will be seen later throughout the iceberg. Halo Reach's MOA are based off real extinct animal. The flightless birds from Halo Reach closely resemble flightless birds that have since gone extinct in New Zealand. The last reported sighting of a real life MOA is claimed to have occurred in 1887 in the New Zealand bush, but it is unknown when the last human contact with these birds occurred. Sand Trap Cipher and Mystery The Halo 3 map Sand Trap has spawned several rumors theories, and easter egg. The Ghost of Sandtrap, Da Vinci Code, wait, is it Da Vinci or Da Vinci? I don't know, I pronounced it wrong in the last video, so uh, I'm just gonna shotgun it, Da Vinci Code. And now, the Cipher of Sandtrap. There are glyphs on brass-colored forerunner structures that many have attempted to decipher to potentially garner a greater meaning or solution to a mystery that may or may not exist. These same glyphs appear in multiple other maps from the game as well, and some have linked the mystery of a possible being buried underneath Sandtrap to these glyphs. Nothing has been deciphered since. Ultra Elite Combat Forms This is a specific and really obscure one. Apparently in one of the Flood missions of Halo 3, if you push Elite Ultra bodies into a hole, they will get infected by the Flood. This is apparently the only appearance and instance of Ultra Elite Combat Forms in Halo 3. Iris ARG The Iris alternate reality game was a Halo 3 marketing campaign that consisted of five episodes that allowed fans to participate and interact with elements across different pieces of media. It started when the Forerunner AI, Adjutant Reflex, posted on the forums within Bungie.net and ended with the release of Halo 3. Players were sent to webcomics, job posting boards, and more that tied into a scavenger hunt that told the story of Halo before humanity. Hold X to board Hunter. This is a reference to a cut Halo Reach feature where you can board the back of a hunter as if it was a vehicle. Players could melee it or plant a grenade within its back for an insta-kill. I don't blame them for cutting this feature. 
It seems pretty overpowered and renders hunters kind of helpless. Halo 3 ODST sold early in France. Looks like some Halo fans got Halo 3 ODST early in France, as some retailers accidentally sold it a whole month ahead of the release date. After checking some old message boards and YouTube videos, this seems to have angered or shocked quite a few fans. Sanghili tongues. Yes, in an early build of Halo 4, elites had tongues. In-universe locations of multiplayer maps. While some of the maps in Halo have a definite location documented in lore, many are mysteriously... Well, who knows where? Especially in Halo CE, where many maps are eerily within desolate, ancient Forerunner facilities or environments that have been since lost to time. Halo 2 Smoke and Mirrors Scandal In the 2003 Halo 2 E3 demo we saw earlier, the whole map and mission was scrapped before the final release of the game, if you recall. And what's even funnier about this is Johnson admits in the demo that this is a real combat situation and isn't smoke and mirrors, which is kind of ironic when you think about it. Hidden spheres outside of Lone Wolf. This is simply two spheres that are outside the map on Lone Wolf that serve as lighting and reflection test objects. I guess Bungie forgot to remove them. Halo's universe is an infinite loop. This is a wild and slightly unnerving theory that many have possibly stumbled upon or wondered themselves. Hidden Xperia has a great video on this topic. So, simply wonder this with me for a second. If the Halo Rings eliminated all sentient life as a response to the Flood, and the galaxy got set back to the Stone Age, what's to stop the Rings from being used again, starting everything back to zero for the second time? Perhaps defeating the Flood is impossible, or always results in a grand reset of the Milky Way. Maybe the Flood will always exist and always be released, to reset the universe. Halo PC Idle Ghost Players This is a strange Halo PC bug where occasionally, players will spawn in without the ability to move, have invincibility, and show up on the scoreboard. Very different than the previously mentioned ghosts. This is more so just a weird bug. 777LL7L At the end of Halo 3 ODST, in the end credits, text will appear at the bottom of the screen. Sometimes, it reads 777 LL7L, which isn't surprising considering Bungie's fondness for the number of perfection. According to Halo Alpha, the call number of a book, the ancient parish of Prestbury, is that string of sevens and L's. On pages 21 and 22, the book divulges on the archaeological discovery of a collection of cairns, or ancient mounds, in a circular arrangement underground. Sound familiar? Unfortunately, I don't know which library has this title matched with the triple seven call number, perhaps somewhere near Bungie's offices in Washington State. The only mention of this I can find in Halo Alpha doesn't tell me which library this book is in. Perhaps y'all may know. Although it is strange that Halo Alpha mentions this without delving deeper. They're typically pretty detailed. Oh no, where do we go? This cult classic Halo 3 rap cover was, according to the creator of it, posted in 2007 at the height of Halo 3. The current channel and creator that hosts the video claims it had over 8 million views on Machinima and landed him a job at Machinima.com as a director. All of this is backed up by hundreds of comments collectively reminiscing hearing the song from 10 years ago. Message all your friends, choose Lone Wolf and let the game begin. You need a warm up because you're rusty and you don't want to play me like that man, trust me. But if you insist, then I'll oblige. Throw down the flare and block out your eyes. You grab the brute shot cause you're a dope, then you rush me and get no scoped. Put this in a museum. It deserves to be preserved with the other artifacts. Jiraul means lump of wood in Sangheili, and is used as a derogatory insult towards brutes from the elites. Monkey nuts, or Blam. The codename for Halo CE before it released was Blam, which replaced the previous codename, Monkey Nuts. Yeah, I'm not making this up, Bungie was simply built different back in the day. Since then, across the Bungie games in Halo 4, naming custom user content such as screenshots and maps with inappropriate language would automatically result in these files receiving the name Blam as a form of censorship. Fake Halo 5 leaked script. In 343's Halo 5 behind the scenes teaser, The Sprint, Season 3, for just a brief moment, at the 17 second mark, you can catch a glimpse of a page of the Halo 5 campaign script. But it isn't the actual script, as this teaser would spoil Halo 5 if it were to be. 
and appears to be the hypothetical false ending for Halo 5. Spartan Locke investigates the wreckage of a destroyed UNSC Infinity, where he sees the Master Chief, helmet caved in and armor pieces chipped off, dead in the snow. Locke attempts to raise the Chief to his feet, finding his chest armor ripped open by the Warden Eternal's attacks. The script ends with Locke calling over the radio to Fireteam Osiris, saying, He's dead. The Warden. Could this have been one of the original planned endings? Was this a pretty dumb plan from 343 to cut off the story about the Chief and tell their own stories focusing on Spartan Locke or some other character? That is entirely up to speculation at this point. It's looking rough out here. I was wondering when our old friend Backwash would make a return. On the eerie Halo 2 swamp map, Backwash, outside of the map, you can find a large message written in blood. It says, it's looking rough out here. Durance. A Durance is a Forerunner memory storage device that holds the memories of a Forerunner after their death. Last thoughts would be stored in the Durance, and they would be interred in a sort of funeral grave or monument. In Halo 4, the memory of the librarian spoke to the Chief from her own Durance. Interesting that bodies aren't the only thing memorialized, but also the memories of those who passed on in Forerunner society. Catalog The Catalog is a sort of collective supercomputer from the Forerunner society. It documented criminal activity, as well as data within something called the Juridical Network, which is like a sort of empire-wide communication network of sorts. This is a particularly strange entry, as those who volunteer to be part of a catalog are once criminals themselves, offering up their existence to be part of a whole. Catalog is like a single being that spans the Forerunner Empire, or Ecumene. Whenever Forerunners gave themselves up to the catalog, they basically entered a coffin and withered away while their mind continued to work from within the advanced internment unit. Additionally, they have some sort of power, almost like a government entity. Catalog and the human timeline denied both 343 Guilty Spark and the Didact from control of various Forerunner artifacts and technology, so they are still awake and functioning to this day. Now we move on to level 6 of the iceberg. MCC and original map differences. Some maps, assets, and features have changed slightly between the original Xbox releases of the franchise, some of the PC ports, and the MCC releases. These are often very minute, blink and you miss it type differences. For instance, in the first iceberg video, I mentioned something called a missing light strip on Hang'em High and couldn't find anything about it online. Turns out, in the trench that runs down the middle of the map, on the original Xbox copy, there is a bevel adorned with lights, which has since been removed from Halo MCC. With this knowledge, I can confirm that I now have no life. Scary face on sandbox. This entry covers the very real spooky face on Halo 3's sandbox map. On the back side of one of, well, presumably the guardian towers that guard over the sandbox, there's a strange optical illusion of what appears to be a scary face, skull, or creature of some kind that is lit up by the backside of the spotlight of the tower. This led to a bit of speculation and became a bit of like a Halo urban legend for a bit. Toy Phantom Glitch. This is a very recent video. It claims that you can play with the Toy Phantom in Halo 2. After YouTuber, The Shilt Show, blasts himself into the sky to land on a static phantom outside of the map, the phantom falls and the video ends. I don't know where the toy part of this glitch comes in, and I'm pretty sure this is just some sort of hoax to start a goose chase on Halo 2, as there are no other mentions of this on the web. Modders would have found a glitch like this by now, so the title of this video is just bizarre, and claims there is an easter egg that there isn't, so weird. Barcode on Halo 5's soccer ball. In Halo 5, some Forge objects, such as the soda can and the soccer ball, have barcodes printed onto them. You can actually scan these in real life, and using barcode scanner sites on the web, General Heed found out that these barcodes all resolve to 141-98472. Is this a secret code? Could there be some secret message, or maybe a cipher embedded here? Halo Reach Demo Differences the Halo Reach demo, which I have never heard of and most have forgotten, has one campaign mission, The Long Night of Solace, 
which cuts off right before the player attacks the Covenant Corvette in space. It also offers the multiplayer map Powerhouse and Firefight map Overlook with full matchmaking support. However, the details of this entry actually list the Halo Reach beta differences, which is full of several changes. Weapons and textures have been changed and tweaked substantially. For instance, the assault rifle was insanely weak in the beta, and the Magnum had a significantly higher vertical recoil climb. I love B's hurricane phone call. In the previous iceberg, I covered the I Love Bees Halo 2 marketing campaign. In short, this was an alternate reality game that brought the Halo lore into real life, where participants solved a series of puzzles to uncover a Halo mystery. One challenge had players travel to designated coordinates listed on the I Love Bees website and make calls on payphones to communicate with actors who played Halo themed characters over the phone. While players hunted for payphones to solve the next clue, Hurricane Ivan touched down on the east coast of the United States, and one devoted player made a call within the center of the hurricane's destructive radius. The character on the other end, known as the Puppet Master, answered the call and proceeded to break character, saying, Dude, it's a hurricane. Put the phone down. This event is obviously hilarious and <laughs> goes to show you how devoted some people were to solving this challenge. Although, I will say, unfortunately, the I Love Bees website has been taken down after being up for perhaps years. Secret Area and Pillar of Autumn In the first mission of Halo CE, there's an observation deck at the bridge of the Pillar of Autumn. If you look into the distance at the Halo Ring, you might notice that the ring in the distance is an optical illusion. The Halo Ring model is actually tiny, but made to appear massive in the distance. This isn't really a secret area, as the title suggests but more so a strange optical illusion that all of us missed because we didn't go into this bizarre, obscure part of the Pillar of Autumn. Reaching the bottom of Jephyrophobia. The Halo Alpha wiki for this Halo CE bridge map states that at the bottom of the map, deep in the foggy depths of the crevasse, there is a room containing health kits and weapons. This entry of the wiki is actually really weird to me, and there is no mention of this secret room full of health kits and weapons anywhere. Even in this video, players used vehicle tricks to reach the bottom of the map to find nothing but the towering column that supports the bridge. Reaching the bottom of Damnation Another Halo CE map, another fall death prevention trick. You can reach the bottom of the map by blasting the overshield off the map with you, and grabbing it on the way down to activate invincibility. Sea Worms Very little known fact about Halo CE. In the ocean on the map Silent Cartographer, you can find these little tiny sea worms swimming around the surface of shallow waters. The wiki points out that both these and the moths on the level 343 Guilty Spark are actually the only animals or indigenous creatures on the Halo Ring. This is surprising as Halo Sea was originally supposed to be planned to have all sorts of beasts and creatures on the ring, including Sharkoi, dinosaurs, and more. Halo Creepypastas there are a variety of Halo creepypastas on the web available for users looking for amateur horror stories about their favorite game series. Some notable titles are the Halo Beta creepypasta and the Halo 3 Remaster story. Cortana Letters The Cortana Letters are a series of mysterious letters emailed from Cortana at Bungie.com. They were sent to marathon.bungie.org before Halo CE released, which at the time was a notable marathon website. From what we know, According to Halo Alpha, Bungie employee Nathan Bittner wrote these letters, and they portray a fairly inaccurate version of the character Cortana. In fact, this email version of Cortana is fairly out of character to what we actually got in the games. This is likely chalked down to the character not being finished at the time, as well as the whole game not being finished. But at the time, nobody knew who Cortana actually was. After the seven letters were sent over email, the eighth Cortana letter was found in the 1.3 version of the Myth Fallen Lord's Disc, another Bungie game. It's interesting to see Bungie tease Halo throughout two of their previous titles, Myth and Marathon, as these titles were their proving grounds, upon which their most notable creation would stand upon. It's even more interesting that in Halo 3, Cortana actually references the first letter, though the other letters are not canon. The Pillar of Autumn Conundrum This is a webpage on halo.bungie.org. 
where a curious fan dove far too deep into the files of Halo CE to determine not just the size of the Pillar of Autumn, but also attempt to understand where the rooms and hallways lay within the ship. The writer of this article, Stephen Loftus, determined that the size of the interior rooms of the Pillar of Autumn actually exceed the width of the ship. He overlaid the meshes of the Pillar of Autumn and the Maz levels onto the Autumn, which the ship itself, I must note, is 1.17 kilometers long, a reference to John 117. Also, a quick tidbit, I found Halo fanfiction from before the release of the first Halo game. Fans are legit relying on trailers and hints at the game to write short stories in early 2000. Like, this is crazy, dude. This is the first Halo fanfix <laughs> before the game was even out. Forerunner email. This is a short poem sent by Adjutant Reflex, the Forerunner AI from the Iris Arg. This email was sent to all recipients of the Xbox Flash newsletter, and it seems to detail the ongoing war with the Flood, and captured the Forerunner mindset as the war raged on into desperation. Dual wielding swords in Halo 3. This video covers yet another YouTube video claiming to show a player holding dual energy swords, this time in Halo 3. This original video? I can't find it. It's probably been taken down. Probably a long time ago. Interestingly enough, you can see the other dual wield swords video recommended on the right side of this video. You know, the hoax video I talked about for Halo 2. Regardless, the original video is still up, and many people have pointed out this supposed Halo 3 glitch to be a hoax done in Forge. It certainly isn't real, but likely sparked a lot of interest back in the day as the video garnered over 100,000 views. Abandoned Clans As players moved on from Halo, or split off from groups, there is no doubt Halo clans have been totally abandoned. Organizations that played in groups and communicated on the regular that are completely abandoned now, lost to time and only reserved in the memories of those who participated in them, and those who ran across them in matchmaking. This has got some last online 10 years ago energy behind the red versus blue door. I'm going to save your time here. There's nothing behind it. Modders got behind it, and there's a blank wall behind it. Halo 5 hand-holding elites. On the mission Swords of Sanghelios in Halo 5, some elites went down like true homies. Original resolution textures. This entry is more so a question, and that is, where did Bungie and 343 source the original files that make up the textures of the game? Were they original? Where they modified images from other sites? The Warthog chain gun sound effect from classic Halos closely resembles a stock machine gun sound effect, so maybe it's likely that some of these textures were obtained from third party providers. Flood Level's negative emotional aura. This is a bit of a joke entry. It's a reference to the Super Mario 64 iceberg and its wet dry world negative emotional aura comment, which Honestly, it just refers to the fact that Halo flood levels are pretty depressing and scary. Halo Reach Covenant languages are translatable. Marty O'Donnell, the soundtrack composer and also a lead role at Bungie, delivered a tweet in 2018 that tipped fans off to the Halo Reach Covenant language possibly being translatable. The tweet reads, Did anybody ever translate the Covenant language in Reach? We worked hard on that. I think I still have the scripts. Whether this is a joke, or perhaps some, if not all, of the Covenant language from Reach is translatable, is still a mystery. I wonder if Marty is just sending us on some wild goose chase. Unicorn References 343 Industries sees unicorns as a sort of reference, kind of like how Bungie uses the number 7. This can be seen through the Fotis armor suit with its horn, emblems, easter eggs in Halo 5 and C Anniversary, and also the unicorn has made it to emblems, skins, and customizables throughout 343's games. Halo Game Boy Advanced ROM Hack This video was originally hosted on Google Video in 2006. It was claimed to be a Halo game for Game Boy Advance, and it's up to the imagination how many fans it fooled from back in the day. The developer of this small Halo ROM hack for GBA has a bit of a history pulling off hoaxes, where he fooled parts of the Sonic community a couple times in 2000 and 2001. On the user's blog, Blaze Hedgehog admitted that they developed the Halo-inspired game in a GBA emulator and posted it to garner no views at all. 
They were hoping the rumors of Halo being ported to Game Boy would cause this hoax to explode in popularity, and this did actually eventually happen when Kotaku found the game and hosted it in a news article after IGN hosted a video of gameplay for Halo DS, which is a modded copy of the GoldenEye game for DS that I covered in the previous iceberg. The Kotaku writer who detailed the game in their story believed it to be an actually unfinished Halo port for GBA. All of this is according to Blaze Hedgehog's posts. Whether true or not, it's still a pretty cool ROM hack. Halo Infinite mines Bitcoin. Halo Infinite is an expensive game. It takes your computer hardware and utilizes a lot of computational power from graphics cards and CPUs alike. This is due to very poor optimization of the game, which performs far worse on PC. Top graphics cards fail to break 60 FPS on Big Team Battle and portions of the campaign. It really is a game held together by popsicle sticks and super glue. Frustrated fans have found their graphics cards even overheating at times. Which brings me to crypto mining attacks. Mining cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin, takes a lot of computer processing power, especially from computer GPUs, as they are built to perform some very intensive calculations. When it comes to cybercrime, a form of crypto mining comes in the form of malicious attacks where bad actors implant malware onto unsuspecting users' computers that consume leftover processing power on cryptocurrency mining. This way, users can steal processing power from strangers' computers to remotely assist in their own financial gains. So, is this the reason Halo Infinite kills performance on high-ended systems? Are the menus, or even the game, secretly mining cryptocurrency for 343 or Microsoft's own profit? There have been Reddit posts where concerned fans postulated this theory, but I don't think this would actually be a thing. I doubt 343 would do this. Regardless, there was a bug in Halo Infinite that downloaded the main menu like thousands of times a minute, so I don't know. It's, it's a conspiracy theory, guys. Halo2sucks.com Wow, I didn't know about this, but there's actually a lot of upset Halo CE fans who ripped Halo 2 after it released. So much so that the website Halo2Sucks.com was established to trash and criticize the things Bungie apparently ruined from Halo CE. I thought the Halo drama nowadays was new, but now it seems there's always been division and critics of the franchise. License Plate Messages did you know that the license plates of Halo 3 ODST's vehicles that litter New Mombasa have hidden meanings and references? The complete list is here. McDonald's sign on top of coagulation. I covered this in the first video, as I thought this was a Meg in Halo 2. On top of the cliffs in the map coagulation, players can see a highlighted section of rock that looks like a capital M. Frank O'Connor's Reset Era and NeoGAF ban. In a now deleted tweet and associated investigation, Allegedly, and I use this term lightly, as not only do I not have enough details on this, but the tweets were deleted. Regardless, apparently he was supposedly banned for making some pretty offensive jokes, but I'm not going to get into this as the drama is weird. 343 removed playable elites due to balancing. This is a theory on the iceberg that I can actually see as being true. 343 Industries for a long time has had a great focus on competitive Halo, and to that extent, HCS and Halo Esports. Could the lack of playable elites in the series be due to the difference in hitboxes between elites and Spartans? Could ranked play be at risk with the addition of the elites? It's possible this question arose and before any thought was put into potentially balancing the elites with Spartans, as had been done in Reach and 3, they were just scrapped to save time and simplify the game. Regardless, we do need playable elites back. Halo 4 almost recasted Master Chief and Cortana. Wow, this is perhaps the stupidest idea I've ever seen. According to an interview of Steve Downs in the Gameplay podcast, Becoming Master Chief, beta testers are given a version of Halo 4 with the voice actors changed for both Chief and Cortana. Apparently, Steve Downs said the playtesters were very disappointed and wanted the original voice actors back. And the rest is history. Lost Merchandise Halo has a lot of merchandise, like, a lot. The question remains, how much of it is undocumented? How much has been forgotten about or isn't available anywhere for sale, between apparel, models, trinkets, toys, and more? And could there be pieces of lost Halo media or merchandise that are out there somewhere? 
Apartment 117 was almost completely forgotten about itself. Yet it could be possible. Halo Beta. Creepy Pasta. This isn't a reference to the actual, unfinished Halo CE Beta, or Beta 1749, but instead a Creepy Pasta. The Halo Beta Creepy Pasta starts as all of these do, buying a mysterious copy of Halo off of eBay. This copy of Halo CE had a diverging plot from the original. While the game could be played through like normal, killing keys on this Halo Beta triggered an alternate plot, where the player is forced to kill Marines alongside the Covenant, and in cutscenes, execute Marines that were attempting to survive. Jeez, yeah, it ends pretty dark, with Chief being infected by the Flood aboard the Truth of Reconciliation. Then, Chief's head, yeah, his head, was used to create a grave mind, while his headless body fights on alongside waves of the Flood. Additionally, Cortana was assimilated into the Flood, and the Halo Ring is warped to Earth for the Flood to attack it. Cortana then flickered back to reality, and got Johnson to light the rings to stop the Flood, which ended the Halo Beta with every species in the galaxy being erased. Well, that's about on par for creepypastas. At the end of the story, the seller does ask the player to not mention the secret ending, saying, just so I don't get sued, for your eyes only, okay? Looks like someone got sued. Also, Mudahar apparently made a haunted gaming episode on this creepypasta, which was written by Posthuman Heresy, but I think that video got pulled down. Strange. Area 54. Area 54 is a single player mod for Halo Custom Edition where you fight monsters and aliens. It was apparently pretty popular, at least amongst the Halo Custom Edition community, with around 90,000 downloads. It also is a continuation of the Area 53 map, and is supposedly fairly creepy. CE's sense of isolation. I'm sure everyone who's played the first Halo game knows exactly what I'm talking about. The way the textures and models couple with the ambient noises of CE builds a feeling of loneliness, abandonment, and contribute to the liminal spaces that litter the game. The whole game feels pretty cold and lifeless in an eerie, lonely kind of way. Rookie is a clone of Master Chief. This theory presents that the Rookie is a clone of the Master Chief, and in this forum post on Bungie.net, someone constructs an elaborate conspiracy that because the Rookie has the same first name as the Chief, well, Jonathan, that they must either be the same person or a clone, right? This is impossible, as there never was a clone of Chief that lived past childhood, and because all the canon and Halo books state they're different people, and I don't know why you'd have clones and just name them the same thing. Just because they have the same name doesn't make them clones. I, I don't get it, what a strange theory. <laughs> Rookie is a Spartan's child. Another day, another theory about the faceless ODST himself. This theory, however, is hosted on Halo Amino. It was written by Installation00, the Halo lore YouTuber we talked about earlier himself. Anyways, he presents that Spartan ones, such as Johnson, among others, could allegedly pass their augmented DNA to their children. It is supposed that due to the rookie's high melee damage output and high jump height, that he must be augmented in some way. So he must be the child of a Spartan one. Never mind the fact that the other ODSTs function the same way. Regardless, I'm pretty sure this false theory is just a joke or a stretch. It seems like Installation 00 has made a few of these crazy theories before. But, uh, if it isn't a joke, I mean, hats off. Pretty, uh, bold theory. Yed 4. And perhaps one of the least known pieces of Halo lore, in the novel Halo Ghosts of Onyx, the elite navigation officer aboard a Covenant ship noted anomalies within Yed 4, which is a Covenant term for the slip space dimension that ships use for faster than light travel. It has since never been named or gotten a mention again. Wow. Da Vinci boxes under backwash. On the same map with several other entries on these iceberg videos, there are a few boxes hidden under backwash with the Da Vinci code. I did it again, the Da Vinci code texture. They are essentially used to power the gravity lifts at the center of the map, according to General Heed. Requiem Flying Squid In the Halo 4 E3 2012 demo showcase, and in Halo 4 concept art, a cut alien in the form of a flying squid can be found. These were meant to populate Requiem, specifically on the mission Infinity within the jungle. Crystal Armor This is a hoax from Halo 3, and a far less known one at that. It was reported that you could unlock this elusive so-called crystal armor, well, somehow. 
It's mostly fodder for several Halo 3 joke videos from 2009. More often than not, it was just an active camo trick captured by screenshots that led to several rumors and theories. Now we're moving on to level 7 of the iceberg. It's about to get pretty cursed in here. J signs. Now we're talking very obscure potential ciphers. In the previous iceberg, we covered the Halo 3 ODST glyph mystery, which entailed the community attempting to solve a puzzle revolving around several glyphs painted around the Mombasa streets. The J signs mystery is a far less known potential puzzle, but it may also be just a wild goose chase just like the glyphs. Across New Mombasa, there are large J logos covering some of the walls. These J signs appear to be referencing Jotun, which is a human company that designs and produces heavy machinery, such as the Elephant from the Halo franchise. Above these logos is what appears to be some sort of cipher. Looks kind of like Braille. After being sent to Codebreakers on Reddit, nothing could be solved. Although, someone did mention that using synthesis from visual images, they pulled out a pretty good melody, and Marty is known for making both the music of ODST, but also teasing puzzles in the game. Maybe there's a link here. Halo Custom Edition Horror Maps Halo Custom Edition has led to a vast library of custom Halo maps and single player campaigns, some of which are horror themed single player missions. After delving into a rabbit hole of YouTube videos from over six years ago, I have found several horror maps from Halo Custom Edition that attempt to scare the player with jump scares, unsettling atmospheres, and intense, desperate survival situations. Some of the weirder sidebar images of this iceberg image are actually from these horror maps. The most notorious of these frightening maps is one named Chamber. The creator of this map is strangely unknown. Nah, just kidding, it seems that Quiet Gamer made this map in 2014, and they posted on some random blog on halomaps.org. 343 Industries is a conspiracy to destroy the Halo franchise. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty good joke, not gonna lie, but sometimes, it makes you think sometimes. Noble 7. Most people might not realize that there have actually been seven members of Noble Team. Spartan Tom A293 was the original Noble 6. In an operation on the planet Fumarole, Tom and Kat fought their way to the Covenant Battlecruiser, the Sanctity of Purification, in an attempt to destroy it with a nuclear bomb. After Kat is wounded, Tom takes the bomb himself and destroys the battleship, along with himself. The Noble 6 we play as fills his shoes, so in a way, you're Noble 7 lining up with Bungie's love for the number 7 once more. Tom's sacrifice can be seen in the Halo Reach trailer, Deliver Hope. Gruntopedia. This is a satirical Halo wiki that documents the lore and Halo universe in humorous entries. It is kinda dead now, and articles are rarely added nowadays. Also, after the time of writing this, and after checking out Gruntopedia again, the website has been pulled down. Rest in peace, Gruntopedia. Untitled Halo Project from 2011. Development for this cancelled Halo began around 2010 before being cancelled around 2011. There's barely anything known about this cancelled Halo project, aside from a few assets that an artist worked on and posted in 2016. Parts of a UNSC frigate, the Mjolnir Mark IV power armor, and the Halo Reach MA-37 assault rifle are included with these leaked images. Along with these concept art leaks came a shot from what was supposed to be part of the project's trailer. It is theorized that this may have been part of an early Halo 4 in development, back when the creative director, Ryan Payton, was at 343 Industries. The game was going in one direction until, with his departure of the company, we ended up receiving a very different Halo 4. This Halo project was potentially a different direction planned for Halo 4 or potentially a game prequel, judging by the older UNSC assets on display. Unused flashlight toggle animation. It's amazing what little details get cut from the development of games, only to be forgotten about completely. In a 2001 GameStock live demo of Halo CE, 
The Master Chief displays a first-person animation for toggling on the assault rifle's flashlight, where he shifts his hand back and forward to turn it on and off. Obviously, this animation was removed for unknown reasons. Perhaps it was because they didn't want to create animations for every weapon. T-Rated Halo CE Halo 5 wasn't the first teen-rated Halo FPS, but instead, Halo CE was. Well, at least at first. In an advertisement from the last page of the Halo Fall of Reach novel, Halo Combat Evolved is listed as T for teen, for blood and gore and violence. For one reason or another, it seems the ESRB changed their decision. Though Halo has always been a relatively light mature game, some artifacts of this rating change can also be seen across display copies of Halo CE that still retain the teen rating. The Precursors Pre-343. The ancient alien shape-shifting godlike race known as the Precursors was first mentioned in Halo 3. In between the terminals and a manual that came with some of the collector's editions of Halo 3, all that would be said about the Precursors is that they were the most technologically advanced race, and that they were told to be some form of past beings of great power. Everything was speculation before 343 fleshed them out in the lore, reaching the other side of the structure in Silent Cartographer. In the depths of the Silent Cartographer facility, there's a large trench that is meant to be impassable by players. It didn't take long for some to discover tricks to cross the gap in search of secret areas. This is likely one of the least known secret areas in Halo. Wow, we're going there, aren't we? In this old video from 14 years ago, some kids believe that they hear Johnson say something kinda sus. The only thing is, not only is it not Johnson, but it's Sergeant Stacker, and he's also just saying, you know, like, pants. Like, really? Everyone in the comments was quick to correct this too, and uh, honestly, why did I just spend the past minute explaining this? Invisible wall glitch on Tombstone. Continuing on with scraping the bottom of the barrel of Halo glitches, I'm willing to bet that you didn't know about this invisible bullet barrier on the Halo 2 map Tombstone, so enjoy this useless bit of information. Crusades Allegory Here we go with the final Halo allegory on this iceberg. Others have brought up this theory and connected all sorts of elements of this game, but these theories led pretty much nowhere. Halo 2's removed beheading. I cannot find any evidence on this topic. The iceberg states that this entry is associated with some rumored cut Halo 2 beheading execution scene. I don't think this entry is real. Either it's misremembered, or the video narrator was trying to create a hoax, or the iceberg creator made it all up entirely, because they mentioned they just saw it in a video. At the end of the day, there is no evidence of this ever being cut from the game. But this mostly reminds me of the Halo 3 Vidoc that showed some brutal scenes of brutes like actually tearing marine arms off before that was obviously cut. Halo for the Gizmondo. In perhaps the most obscure cancelled Halo game, the Halo universe was planned to be brought to the mobile game console, the Gizmondo. Haven't heard of the Gizmondo? Yeah, me neither. It was primarily released in the UK, with limited releases in Sweden and the US. Very few games were actually released for the Gizmondo, and the console never received a sequel. Halo for Gizmondo ended up being cancelled before pretty much anything would be known about it. I don't even believe that there could be any conceivable lost media from Halo for Gizmondo as it likely never left brainstorming phases. Hunt the Truth was a meta-narrative. Uh, this is going to be good, and slightly depressing. Also, spoilers for Hunt the Truth podcast, so skip ahead a little bit if you'd like. This is a conspiracy theory that delves into some very deep rabbit holes that associates the Hunt the Truth podcast and marketing campaign with some deeper meaning. Essentially, as Benjamin Giroud uncovers the truth about the kidnappings in the Spartan program cover-up, Oni and the UNSC government move to silence and subjugate him. This is fairly similar to authoritarian police states we have seen before in history. And luckily, we don't have to share this nightmare existence to the degree that the civilians of UNSC space do. Perhaps Hunt the Truth was meant to be a meta-narrative, or more specifically, a historical parallel of the dangers of authoritarian government and society, and the threat of a surveillance state. Maybe there was some greater meta-narrative at play. I hope we never go down that road to the extremes that Hunt the Truth does. Inaccessible Bridge and Silent Cartographer. This is an obscure entry, but it refers to this bridge here and the first room you enter in Silent Cartographer. I have no idea why it's on the iceberg, other than maybe 
it is the most obscure piece of map geometry. Like, why is this here, bro? Assassinating drones in Halo Reach. Drones are the only Halo Reach enemy, aside from engineers, that you cannot assassinate. Some have wondered if you could assassinate them, and others likely started rumors that you could. The Iceberg says comments on YouTube passed around this rumor, but I have no evidence to back it up. This entry is a bit of a throwaway, but maybe there was a theory that assassinating drones were a thing at one point. If you shoot a drone in the head, they explode in Halo Reach, so there you go. Halo 2 distracted people from the 2004 election. Halo 2 was a massive release in the gaming industry, hitting national headlines and starting a worldwide phenomenon. Around the release of the game was the 2004 American presidential election between George W. Bush and John Kerry, but large portions of the population seemed to be more interested in Halo 2. In this IGN forum board, we can see one worried fan speculating on this in October of 2004 prior to the election. In some articles, I find Halo 2 mentioned alongside the election for week in review articles. It is likely some people may not have paid much attention to the election cycle or even voted because they were too occupied with Halo. So, the question stands. Would John Kerry have won if Halo 2 never came out? <laughs> this is goofy. We'll just... <laughs> just bear with me for a second here. Hidden Xperia works at 343. Knock, knock. It's conspiracy time again. Some people actually believe this one. They think that one of the largest, in my opinion, one of the best Halo YouTubers is a 343 shell who works alongside their ranks. This is without any evidence and mostly just raw speculation. Never mind the fact that he has criticized Halo Infinite and 343's mistakes many times in his videos before. Requiem Jellyfish. There you go. Yet another cut Halo 4 creature that was in the Halo 4 E3 demo. Now we move on to the final level of the iceberg. Everything on this level is either a big gag, a conspiracy theory, or something you've never seen before. First off, we're starting with modders. This is stated to be the oldest Halo video still up on YouTube. Perhaps the first one ever posted. It was posted by Psycho Exile 17 years ago, on July 27th, 2005. After checking out the channel, there is actually a video titled Terminal Hacker, which was uploaded before it on July 15th, 2005, 12 days earlier. This video is a time capsule, and as YouTube launched in February of the same year, it might be likely that there is an older Halo YouTube video. While Terminal Hacker currently stands as the oldest Halo video on YouTube, my quest to find an even older one on the platform continues. Halo changed my life. This entry refers to how fans and the Halo fandom cite Halo as life-changing, or at least life-defining for some. Many see Chief as a hero and a role model, and some want to live by that example. In some Reddit posts, I've seen some saying that Halo and the universe around it kept them pushing through difficult times after tragic events. A lot of us have some very fond memories with the game, at LAN parties and online matches where many have actually found lifelong friends through the game. And honestly, I think any form of fan media or entertainment can change lives. I mean, music, video games, movie series, I feel like they all influence life in some minute to major way. And with Halo specifically, my generation remember the games fondly, and in some rare cases, pretty life-changing. Yeah, it's pretty cheesy, but Halo is what my friends played when we were kids, and in a way, Halo did change my life, as it provided me the opportunity to make these great videos for you guys. And, uh, Thanks for hanging in there and watching this far. Faces and Sidewinder. The textures in Halo CE are fairly muddy, low quality, and kind of grody, which is indicative of video games from that time. And the Halo CE map Sidewinder, outside of Blue Base, the textures on some of these rocks are mirrored. There is a video that discovered this quirk and pointed out some of these rocks on Sidewinder, and one of them they said looks like Jesus. This mirrored texture somehow looks like his face. Although it just looks like some kind of just optical illusion. Bungie has not come out and talked about this obscure find, so it likely isn't an intentional easter egg. The lag is fake. 
All of the lag you experienced in Halo lobbies was all artificially produced by Microsoft. It's a grand conspiracy to get you to buy expensive Xbox 360 hardware, including wireless adapters, Ethernet cables, and more. Open your eyes, sheeple. Big Lag is trying to keep the secrets of superior online video game networking from us. I actually wonder if this is why Infinite has such dreadful desync and server issues too. Perhaps 343 are in on the game. The first Halo fan game. There are numerous Halo fan games, some of which are still in production. But which one was the first? My guess is Halo Zero, which is the 2D shoot 'em up for PC that released in 2005. It's pretty impressive what they fit into this small project, including a 30 minute campaign that tells the story of the Master Chief fighting through the fall of Reach. This exact story isn't actually canon, but it's a pretty cool fan game that you can check out for free. Oh, and it also has multiplayer. That's pretty impressive. The creator of this project, Doberman, has actually produced a lot of mobile apps that are Halo themed and I highly recommend you check them out. Government Agent Halo Clans. Here's an entry I added that, mm, you know, honestly you have no way of proving or disproving. How many government agencies had Halo Clans? Whether that be the CIA, FBI, local police forces, and more who entered multiplayer matches to track down hostile forces or criminals online undercover. You see, this sounds insane, but if you check the news, various world governments have a history of planting agents into online games to find potential criminals. So how often did this happen in Halo lobbies? Exodus secret message. In the Halo Reach mission Exodus, we might have another Halo mystery on our hands. This one has gotten barely any attention, but it involves three brutes speaking some sort of message before despawning. Someone tried reversing the audio and got nothing, and if you ask me, this is likely a glitch or oversight that no one knows about involving some brutes that respond in the wrong place, that are just uttering normal idle dialogue, or perhaps it's just level garbage collection clearing out some brutes as they were speaking normal language. I don't know, it seems kind of weird. Subliminal messages. Halo has no subliminal messages whatsoever. You should play the game. Enjoy it at your own leisure. There is no underhanded motive here. Internal plexus of the Pillar of Autumn. This is a reference to the Mario 64 iceberg, and how the interior of Peach's castle contradicts the exterior of it, where... The interior is much bigger than the actual exterior. You know, the phrase, it, it looks bigger on the inside, it actually is. And as you may remember, Halo CE's Pillar of Autumn has the same exact issue, where the interior is much larger than the exterior. This entry itself is a bit of a theory, relating back to the fact that each copy of Super Mario 64 is personalized. Basically, if we take Mario 64 principles with the internal plexus of Peach's castle and apply it to the Pillar of Autumn and how it is built out of impossible architecture, this is due to an AI built into Halo CE that constructed the Autumn as a replica of its nervous system to facilitate its personalization algorithms. What does this mean? Every copy of Halo CE is personalized due to this personalization AI that builds Halo CE and constructs its features purpose-built for the player playing the game. Every copy of Halo CE is personalized. Halo's Illuminati symbolism purged from the internet. There was a mention of a connection between Halo and the Illuminati on a now taken down conspiracy website. And saying Illuminati is starting to make me get worried about demonetization. I don't know if conspiracy theories are frowned upon on YouTube, but here we go. According to the website, Halo and Halo Reach have Illuminati symbolism. Others have seen these same connections, and some conspiracy theorists have made documentation of their own on the topic. Between the religious connections, including the repetition of the number 7 from throughout the games, and the allegories of Halo being connected to large events in history, such as the Iraq War, the Crusades, and multiple different Bible stories, and therefore, individuals in high places. This rabbit hole of connections and conspiracies knows no end, as many controversial conspiracies and historical figures are tied to similar allegories that have been drawn between Halo and real life. Shared Nightmares It is likely that due to the prevalence of Halo on a lot of our youths, and the presence of horrifying entities such as the Flood, 
that people have shared very similar nightmares while asleep that focus on the topic of Halo. Shared nightmares themselves are infamous in pop culture, where many people have claimed they've dreamt up the same horrifying concoctions in their dreams and wonder if there's some greater meaning to these coincidences. People who suffer from sleep paralysis often have similar visions of these shadowy beings lingering in the dark corners of their rooms as they're frozen in paralysis late at night. One of the most infamous of these shadowy beings is named the Hat Man. A lot of people who are either under the influence of intense psychedelic substances or who are suffering from sleep paralysis admit that they've been haunted by a shadowy silhouette of a man wearing a jacket and a brimmed hat. It's mind-boggling and kind of unnerving that so many people are witnessing these same entities and visions, and even worse so that there's no explanation. And I kind of am starting to wonder how Halo plays a part in this phenomenon. Also, this is a reference to the Super Mario 64 iceberg once again. Bungie stole the idea from Ringworld, 1970. Ringworld is a sci-fi novel from 1970, written by Larry Niven. The book involves an adventure of a shipwrecked crew along the surface of an inwards-facing, ring-shaped planet that is decorated with land masses, mountains, plants, and animals. In addition to this, the crew runs across the ruins of an ancient civilization, and they find a map room which holds a charted out map of the entire ring world. A disaster from the past wiped out the civilization on the ring, and the protagonists attempt to get their ship off world. This sounds very familiar to anyone familiar with the plot of the first Halo game. And while it may be possible one of the heads of the project at Bungie was inspired by the book, there are plenty of differences between both the book and the video game. Ring shaped worlds are also common in science fiction, as you'll see them in games like Stellaris as well. Although there may or may not be a connection, what's most interesting is that Larry Niven was actually asked by Bungie to write the first Halo novel, which is crazy. They asked the Ringworld 1970 writer to write the Halo novel, which is about another Ringworld. Perhaps there is a connection here. Custom edition maps with zero downloads. I should add Halo 2 PC maps as well. Checking halomaps.org, there are no modded maps that have zero downloads, but this only includes this popular site. How many full-fledged modded maps or Halo mods are simply lost to time? Perhaps some modders never put their content up for download, or worse, wiped a hard drive with all their work on it by accident. There is no telling how many maps have never been played, and I'm going to include Forge in this section too. How many Forge maps have never been experienced by anyone? This rabbit hole is kind of endless, so we're going to move on. Crosshair turning red when playing multiplayer maps alone. <laughs> this would have freaked me out as a kid. Has anyone ever had this happen to them? And if so, what was keeping you company on that map after all? Undiscovered areas. Halo's levels are massive, sprawling expanses with plenty of secret and hidden areas. This makes me wonder how many sections of Halo's campaigns and multiplayers have not been explored. Honestly, I think they all have, but you know, there's, I mean, come on, let's just have fun. Halo Zero full game. Halo Zero is obviously one of the most notable fan games. As I mentioned earlier, it has a 30 minute campaign, but seems kind of short, doesn't it? Is there a full game out there that was never released with a much longer campaign? Likely not, this is kind of goofy and uh, implying that uh, fan media has a lost fan media. Although Halo Zero Evolved was actually planned as a sequel, but it was canceled after a few betas released for Halo Zero 2. So, there is a bit of a cancelled sequel to this game. Undiscovered glitches. I wouldn't doubt there are some undiscovered glitches in games as big as Halo, but uh, there's probably very few of them left. A lot of modders have really dug through the code of these games. Halo 3 ODST Masonic Influences. What a meme. I can't find any connections between Halo 3 ODST and the Freemason Secret Society. Although there are some mentions of Halo being associated with Freemasonry, only where there are Illuminati connections postulated, of which there are like two places or so to find online from my experiences. You know, I actually dug into this topic way too deep, and I've found videos explaining it, and websites and forum posts on like Bungie.org, it's, it's wild. Empty multiplayer theory. The dead internet theory is a conspiracy that big government and secret organizations are filling the internet with bots and AIs that spit out content to fill the web with manipulative posts in an attempt to sway the masses. This is a scary thought experiment, 
but it gets even scarier when we realize there are actually so many bot accounts and artificial intelligences that are being proliferated and seem to be slowly taking over the web. So much so that human users are beginning to become indiscernible from these bots sometimes. So perhaps the internet someday will be quote unquote dead with very few human users able to find each other through the seas of bots and artificial intelligence. What if Halo servers had always been full of bots? I mean, look at Halo Infinite. They already put bots into matches when a player quits, and some of the Fiesta lobbies are entirely bots. Open up your eyes, sheeple. The Mona Lisa. This is another thing I added to the iceberg. This is perhaps one of the most darkest and horrifying stories in all of Halo. In the short stories series, Halo Evolutions, the crew of the UNSC Red Horse are sent on a mission to the quiet prison ship known as the Mona Lisa, which became still near the destroyed first Halo rink. Marines then board the ship and attack unarmed elites that are presumed to be invaders. One of the elites holds his hand up to his mouth, making a shushing motion. The teams investigate the ship, where Marines go missing one by one, some dragged into the darkness by unknown entities. Some marine bodies are found with mutations, and yeah, you guessed it, it's the Flood. They're back. They attack the marines, driving them back in a desperate struggle to the escape pods. In the end, one marine and an elite with a cricket bat duel for the final escape pod. This is perhaps one of the most intense things I've seen related to Halo. It involves the full background lore of the Flood, and how not just freaky and despicable they are, but... It also shows humanity's desperation as they, along with the surviving elite, attempt in vain to make it out alive. What's more is that the Mona Lisa, the prison ship, was actually an Oni experiment. They were using the Flood and testing it on human samples in an effort to discover more about the Flood, which is a f horrible form of human experimentation, but here we see the cost of it. This also reminds me a lot of Dead Space. Really good short, you should check it out. Halo movie was cancelled due to temporal leakage. This means that the Halo movie was cancelled due to an unknown anomaly, and we haven't caught on to this fact yet. Peter Jackson didn't walk away from the project. The deal never fizzled out. Something else, beyond our control, cancelled the project. Original Trilogy's Enchanted Sound Font Halo's original trilogy is magical, and this is due to magical enchantments that were applied to soundtracks and sound effects of the games. Yeah, this entry is totally real. Martin O'Donnell's MK Ultra Connections. Okay, what is even going on anymore? <laughs> Parallels to the Divine Comedy in Data Hive. The Divine Comedy is an Italian poem by Dante Alighieri, produced around the early 1300s, and consists of three parts, Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso, which stands for Hell, Purgatory, and Heaven. It is already known that Halo 3 ODST is a parallel to Dante's Inferno, the first part of the Divine Comedy that highlights the nine circles of hell, which can all be witnessed through data logs throughout New Mombasa that tell the story of Sadie, the daughter of the man who created the superintendent AI. In the story, an NMPD police officer is sent to ensure the murder of Sadie's father down in the depths of New Mombasa's data hive. In the second to last mission of the campaign, the rookie delves into the Covenant and drone-infested data hive to rescue Veronica Dare before he runs into the same corrupt cop from Sadie's story. If you manage to collect all of the data logs before entering the data hive, a secret easter egg that provides completion to the story is triggered. The police officer will tell the rookie to wait outside of a frozen room, saying, I gotta check on a personal issue. If you follow him into the room, you'll find Sadie's father dead, slumped against a wall. The police officer then says, Kensler gave me real specific instructions. Make sure the doc's dead, and make double sure no one knows about it. Sorry friend, you know way too much. At this point he will turn on the player and attack you. This is perhaps the only human character who you are actually expected to kill in the Halo franchise, as he tries to kill you first with his shotgun. After taking him out, you get to view one final audio log to finish Sadie's story. The final ring of hell in Dante's Inferno is treachery. A large, frozen lake where sinners guilty of betrayal are trapped for eternal suffering. Sheesh, that's heavy. Do you see the connection here? Frozen room, traitorous cop, frozen lake, traitorous souls. This entry isn't a joke. It is confirmed that Halo 3 ODST is an allegory to Dante's Inferno. It also stands for the treachery of Kensler the main antagonist in Sadie's story, who attempted the murder of the Doctor before the events of Halo 3 ODST. 
2401 Penitent Tangent kills you for waiting on Backwash. The red monitor that floats around the multiplayer map Backwash was rumored to kill idling players according to an isolated mention on a random Halo 2 iceberg. Apparently, the creator's friends heard about this from some little-known rumor. Strange. Arbiter is in an alternate universe. Here's another interesting one I heard from a different Halo iceberg. The Arbiter, at the end of Halo 3, was warped to an alternate dimension, along with the rear half of the Ford unto Dawn, never to reunite with the Chief we know from our current timeline. He lives on in a separate dimension of the Halo universe. Master Chief is the Messiah. This is the cherry on top to the religious connections with Halo. John is postulated to be some sort of parallel to Jesus, or the Messiah, as he continuously saves humanity time and time again while performing godlike feats. He combats ancient, sublime terrors, inspires and leads humanity in an unwinnable fight against all odds against a false religion, and ends up defeating every threat nearly single-handedly. However, Master Chief is meant to be a blank state of a superpowered character for any player to fill the shoes of. Master Chief was originally meant to be the player in a green suit, and nothing more. But the lore builds up a mythical, legendary character, surrounded by sevens and religious references, especially in Halo 2 and 3. Additionally, some people make this connection. At the end of Halo 3, after saving everyone, he disappears into the stars, leaving humanity to remember and believe in him. Humanity has come to revere the Chief, and we were desperately left to believe in Chief, and hope for salvation from the Covenant and Flood. With all of these references to religion, I wonder if Halo was actually intended to deliver some sort of religious message, or was merely inspired by mythical and supernatural stories. And finally, the last entry on the Halo Iceberg, Part 2. Halo 3 Lost Master Chief Death Scene. This one is actually real. This scene was almost fully rendered and was an alternate Halo 3 cutscene that was cut before release. In a YouTube video, which I've linked in the description if you'd like. Wow, you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. The support from each and every one of you means so much to me and does more than you can imagine for this channel. If you haven't seen the first Halo Iceberg Explained video, link is in the description if you want to check it out. And as always, have a great rest of your day.